Hello, welcome to another stream. How about that? How about that? Welcome, welcome, welcome. How are you all doing today? Hello, I could do uh, what are you one? Mr. Botka, Nitrix Life, Sasa, Lala, Aaron, Kurnas, Anna Bothu. Hello, hello. He hurts and blots. Yetanasa, I've seen twos. Hello, hello. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So today is uh, Friday, if I'm not mistaken. Right. And that means today, according to the schedule, we're doing a random one off stream. That's right. Hello, uh, at Hammond. As Isualin, hello, hello, welcome, welcome, welcome. So, and uh, yeah, so today is a random one on stream, and that means I pick a random topic and I stream that topic for a single stream. And the topic of today is uh, cellular atoma at atomatum? Atomata? Atomata? I, I don't know how to pronounce this shit, to be fair. Right, uh, so who knows what the fuck is this? <laughs> Cello a tomato. I think that's how we pronounce them. Tomato, tomato. Yeah. A tomato. Yeah. Cellular a tomato. A cellular tomato. Uh, yeah. So you can actually Google it, uh, it up, and you'll probably find a Wikipedia article which explains it relatively well, I suppose. Uh, cellular a tomato. A tomato. Uh, yeah. So essentially, it's, it's like a automaton on uh, a grid, maybe like two dimensional, maybe one dimensional, maybe sometimes three dimensional. It actually doesn't really matter. So what matters is that you have a cell, um, and basically the next state of the um, of the grid usually computed based on the previous state, and uh, you know. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, also, it does not necessarily has to be like a um, rectangular. It could be hexa uh, hexagonal. The cells can be hexagonal. So yeah, uh, specific shapes and dimensions can vary. But what's important is that you have cells and they have different states and the next state of the cell is computed based on its current state and the state of the neighbor's uh, cells and so on and so forth so and um there are many different interesting uh cellular automaton uh atom automat how do you pronounce that holy shit like i, I don't even know how where to put the emphasis uh so it just drives me nuts like how do you uh, so I know that automaton is a singular form, right? Uh, automaton. Automaton. Uh, uh, like I'm probably mentioning it. Uh, automata. Uh, automata. Okay, automata. So there are many different uh, kind of automata, and uh, so the most famous one is uh, the Conway's Game of Life, and probably a lot of people are familiar with it. But apart from the uh, Conway's Game of Life, there are, um, there, are even, there are more of them, right? And the second famous, I would say, is probably Rule 110. It's a one-dimensional uh, cellular automata. Automata. Uh, and uh, yeah, so basically you have just a row of cells and the next row is computed based on the cells of the previous uh, of the previous row so and it can generate different interesting patterns like that so as far as i know uh, rule 110 is also turing complete just like conway's game of life uh, yeah it's similar to conway's game of life and what's interesting is that if you have some computational system right and you can implement rule 110 in that system you can claim that your system is turing complete as far as i know this is one of the ways the html5 plus css3 turing completeness was actually demonstrated right somebody implemented rule 110 using only html5 and css and uh, those people started to claim that uh, html5 plus uh, css3 is turing complete because of this specific rule so yeah the idea of today's stream is to actually go through different uh, cellular automata automata cellular automata automata and just implement them that's right so we implemented conway's game of life a lot on these streams so maybe we're not going to implement it maybe we will i don't know it depends so but today i want to focus on other cellular cellular automata I, I will never learn how to pronounce this shit. Holy shit. <laughs> uh, anyways, does it sound interesting? Uh, so we may start with rule 110. 
Why not? We may start with it. Uh, but then we can try to implement something something else. So maybe uh, other interesting, interesting cellular automata. Uh, all right, uh, let's get uh, for it. Uh, let's get for it. So it's going to be Team Ux, and let me take a look. Mm -hmm -hmm. All right, so uh, we're gonna. I suppose we're gonna just create a single folder where we're gonna keep all of the automata. Um, yeah. So, but we need to come up with a name uh, for this thing. Uh, a tomato. <laughs> yes. <laughs> ah, we're gonna call it a tomato. So. <laughs> Uh, so the language of today, I don't know, I don't want to think too much about the language, uh, so we're gonna go with C, right, how about that? We're gonna go with C. Uh, so first I'm gonna try to implement rule 110 <clears throat> um, on the console, and maybe if, maybe it will also make sense to actually have a, like a graphical visualization using OpenGL or SDL or something like that. So, but I'm gonna start with just implementing like, you know, in a console. Uh, Alright, so let's like, include everything and uh, the std lib. Why not zig? Well, you know the rules. Zig is uh, 300 bucks. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, this thing is 300 bucks. All right. Uh, tomato. Yeah, tomato. So, cellular tomato. That's what we're doing. So, maybe I'm going to even create a readme. Uh, a readme. <coughs> MD. Uh, cellular tomato. <laughs> Cellular to me. <laughs> uh, a collection of different cellular auto automata autom automata implementations 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 uh, for rec uh, recreational purposes. Does it sound good? I think it sounds pretty goddamn epic. And we're gonna uh, give the link. Uh, can Google stop appending this shit? Like, it's just so annoying. All right. Um, yeah, so we're gonna give the link in here. Uh, automata. Uh, atom yeah, automata. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Anabotho. Um, all right. So, what's gonna be the license? Uh, should I? release it under proprietary license maybe i'm gonna use mit this time okay so let's introduce since it's a rule uh 34 right since it's a rule 34 uh where is it uh, rule rule 110 Copyright, proprietary, yes, exactly. So uh, I'm gonna put this thing here. So rule 110. So it's based on the rows, right? <clears throat> uh, so, and basically there's a pretty cool animation that explains how to implement. So yeah, you have a particular pattern, right? Uh, that consists of three cells. And then you have uh, the next cell that should be in the middle. So if you look at this animation, you will clearly see how to implement that. So here's the pattern and matches this particular pattern. So that means the next cell should be that. And uh, we can clearly, so there's even a table here, uh, which we're probably gonna use. So if you have three zeros in a row, the next center one should be zero and so on and so forth. And there is like two to the power of three of such patterns, which is eight. Um, and we'll just have to hard code all of these patterns and just match them and just replace them. Um, uh, somebody asked about the zoomers thingy. I can't see that for somebody. What happens that to zoom? Oh yeah, I see. I see. Yeah, yeah it's a it's a special zoomer app. 
Um, okay, so I'm gonna go with a fixed row. As far as I can tell, quite often people implement it like on an infinite row. Um, but I'm gonna implement it on a, on a finite row because it's gonna be easier for uh, for the time being. So let's actually define row size and how big of a row we wanna have. Let's actually go with a pretty small row, like around 20, 20 cells. I think that's, that should be okay. Uh, also, cells can be one of those values, like one or zero, to be a little bit more like type safe, uh, to be a little bit more type safe. I wanna introduce like an enumeration called cell. Uh, and since the cell is not like life or dead, like in case of, uh, like in case of Conway's Game of Life, we should give them appropriate names, I don't know. <laughs> so it's gonna be zero and uh, one, something like this, but they are kind of difficult to uh, to type, so maybe I'm gonna go so with the following name. I think cock uses a similar notation where it denotes zero as O, right, and one is gonna be I. So this is purely for type safety. You might as well actually just use zero and one directly, but then we won't have uh, a spe specific type for the cell, and I want to go full ADA on that thing. Right, so, and have specific types. Like, in ADA it would be actually pretty cool, I think. Uh, so if I had ADA, right, so then we had procedure, main is begin, right, and we would be able to create something like cell uh, is zero or one or maybe i could even say is a range from zero to one and basically uh, it would be checked at compile time uh it would be checked at compile time if i don't go outside of that range so well not really go outside of that range but at, at least try to use something that is not a cell you see what i mean so that would be kind of cool but unfortunately c does not create such um you know such type safety Unfortunately, so yeah, it is what it is. I don't know. We'll see. So let's introduce a structure of a row, right? So here is a row, and the row is going to have cells uh, of a specific row size. As you can see, uh, like after programming an ADA, like I have an urge of creating as many like constants as possible and as many types as possible. I think ADA actually like damaged my brain in a sense. <laughs> like I really want to create as many things as possible and describe like every little small detail. Uh, so yeah, so here's a row, here's a single row. And by the way, since it's inside of a struct, it acts like a value, so that means I should be able to uh, define something like a function next row that accepts uh, like the current row, the pr or rather previous row, uh, as a value and returns the next one as, uh, as a value as well. Uh, right, so that should be possible to do. Um, so let me also include assert. Let me also include assert, and I'm gonna just simply assert. Uh, that this thing is not implemented yet. Uh, to do is not implemented. Okay, so, and also since I'm using false, I probably need to include a std boolean, right? I need to include a std boolean. Um, <clears throat> Okay, um, so getting the next row is uh, one thing, but you also need to be able to uh, to render all of that, right? So let's actually do something like print row, which also accepts the row, and just print it. Uh, so it's also going to be not implemented. Uh, I, I don't know, why do you have to mark it as implemented? Let's actually go ahead and implement it, right? So it's going to be something like... Uh, zero less row size, right? Here's the row size. And what you need to do, you need to print um, the cell like this. Let's actually use put C. Uh, if the row cells I is zero, uh, you have to print one thing. You have to print one thing, otherwise you have to print another thing. So uh, it's gonna be like, why don't we have like, um, you know, 
a table, uh, like like an array that maps um, that maps the cell to a particular character. So something like this. Uh, let's call it cell image, right? Cell image, and it consists of two cells. And unfortunately, I wish I could do something like uh, like cell count, but uh, but I cannot do that. Like, and C doesn't actually make it easy for me. But one thing I can do. Uh, I can quite easily, uh, quite easily use this designated initialization saying that if it's zero, it has to be a space, and if it's one, it has to be, let's say, asterisk, right? So I can do at least that. So I have cell image. Um, as far as I know, this is a standard now. Uh, and now I don't even have to check anything here, so I can now use row cells i as an index in cell image that I can just simply put C into the standard output. You see what I mean? So, and that should basically uh, render the row. I don't even have any conditions or anything. I just use the value as an index and I just, you know, print that. So, and then after that, I wanna, you know, do uh, a new line in here, right? So, because every time I print a row, I want it to be on the next line. Uh, no ifs, yes, no branching. So, it's faster. No branching means faster. <laughs> Removing branches got quicker, exactly. <laughs> so, yeah. Imagine if we translate it to shader language. We definitely want to get rid of the branches. Uh, okay, so print row. You know what? Let's actually also create a function that generates a random row. Um, so it's going to be row, random row. Random row. So what we're going to have here, we're going to define a result, uh, which initially initialized, initially initialized, by the way, uh, with zero, and then we're going to just return this entire thing. So, and we're going to iterate through all of this shite, uh, a row size, plus plus uh, i, and uh, so we're going to just do the following thing, uh, result cells i equal rand uh, 2, and that gives us a random row which we can just call like this and then print the row. There we go. There we go. So, but I'm, I'm not even sure if this entire shit compiles. I just realized that I never tried to compile it. All right, let's actually uh, create a make file or what or whatnot. And so uh, let's call it main. It depends on main.c and we're gonna do ccwo. Uh, maybe I should actually use like cc uh, w extra do I want to use std sc11 maybe maybe not I'm not sure about that um, o main main c and let's try to build this entire thing so we don't have a putsy because it requires the standard output in, th in here standard output and there we go so if I try to execute this entire program here we go here is a random row and it's gonna be the same no matter how many times I actually uh, execute this program so I keep executing the program and the row is is the same who knows why who knows why this row is always the same uh, I'm not using Clang so and I'm pretty sure with the Clang everything is gonna be pretty, pretty cancerous so uh, Clang uh, so if I do something like uh, uh, CC Clang, make minus B. Yeah, classic. Uh, cool. So, uh, Srand not called, exactly. Srand is not called. Uh, do I want to call it? Yeah, I want to call it. I can call it. But, I mean, it's not actually changing anything. You have to use, uh, like, a different seed every time. And one of the tricks to use different seed majority of the time is to actually use time, right? So, which gives you the current time. And I'm pretty sure you have to include something like time.h to actually be able to pull it off. So, then we can do something like this. Time, too few arguments. I think it accepts something like zero in here. And... Yeah, now, if you try to execute this entire thing, it's going to be different uh, majority of the time. But if you do that too fast, it's going to be the same, because I think it returns you seconds. So it's going to be different, like, every second. Right, so this is how it works. So, yeah, there we go. 
cool. We implemented generating a random row and uh, we need to now implement a next row. Right, so to have um, a next row, what we need to have? We, we need to hard code this entire table. We need to hard code this entire table. Uh, luckily, this is basically the values from 0 to 7. So this is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 in binary representation, right? So they are in binary representation. So basically, we can use these patterns as indices in the array. Right, so we basically can have array of eight elements and uh, then use the patterns as the indices, which make which will make it super fucking efficient, right? And will reduce all sorts of branching and uh, then we'll claim the title of God Coolers. That's the plan, at least for today. Does it make sense? Um, the Thinur, what's up, The Thinur? How are you doing? Um, So let's quickly do that. Uh, so Ramon Monmon, hello, hello, welcome to the stream, really glad to see you. How are we doing? Uh, here's an idea. So we want to be able to take like three cells, uh, three cells, and turn them into an index for a pattern table. Right, so we're gonna have this uh, sort of table which returns a cell and uh, let's call it patterns. And how many patterns do we have? We have two to the power of three. Uh, to, the power, to the power of three patterns, but this is uh, this is not really power in C. So to take uh, a two to the power of three, you have to use like bit shifts, uh, right? So this is basically how you do that. Um, this is basically how you do that. And now we need to actually have uh, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, uh, eight uh, different patterns. Right, but uh, unfortunately C doesn't have, all right, it doesn't have uh, binary literals. C++ does have binary literals, but C doesn't. And <laughs> I tried to Google what, uh, why uh, C binary literals. <laughs> I remember a long time ago, actually, why doesn't C have binary literals? Uh, drum roll. A proposal to add binary constants was rejected due to lack of precedence and sufficient utility. Lack of precedent and sufficient utility. Fucking standardization committee lives in their own fucking world. Like... <laughs> the fuck is wrong with people? <laughs> like, holy shit. Um, <laughs> um, imagine thinking that binary literals don't have a sufficient utility. <laughs> binary and computers never seen them before. <laughs> this is so dumb. Holy fuck. Uh, anyway, uh, so what we can do though, we can create uh, some sort of a macro, right? Uh, some sort of a macro uh, that accepts um, the cells, right? So let's say it accepts cell A, B, and cell C, and it basically constructs the index out of these three cells, right? So essentially, A should be to the left, so that means we should uh, shift A like two times, right? Then we need to combine it with uh, B, uh, that is shifted one time and then we should combine it with C. So if we have three cells, you will be able to um, uh, turn all of that into a pattern. Um, mm, mm, mm. All right, so uh, and essentially what you can do now, you can say uh, pattern O, O, O and there we go. So that turns these three O's into an index and uh, then you can map that index into uh, what's expected there. So in here we're going to do it like that. So uh, we might as well actually repeat that, uh, you know, seven times. Four, uh, one, two, three, four. Ah, four. And basically just start binary counting and cover all of the possible patterns. So we have zero, the next one is going to be one, the next one is going to be a two, then uh, three, then uh, four, 
and of course after that all of that is going to be one uh, then it's going to be uh, one in here then one in here and then it's going to be one like that so we, as you can see through binary counting we covered all of the uh, all of the possible patterns and uh, yeah uh, Cool thing is that all of that is not going to be computed at runtime because all of that is computable at compile time, so it's going to be optimized away. So we don't even have to worry about that. Um, all right. So let me see what kind of rules we have to herd code. So in case of zero zero zero, it's going to be uh, zero. It actually goes like this: zero one one one. So the next three patterns, uh, the next three patterns are going to be one. That's for sure. So then another one is going to be zero and next two are going to be ones. So it's going to be something like this. There we go. We basically had coded all of the uh, patterns. Yeah, reverse order. I don't know why the order is reversed, but it is what it is. So yeah, so that's pretty, pretty cool way of head coding the patterns, um, I think. And what's cool is that we will be able to reuse this pattern macro uh, to actually look up for specific patterns as well. Uh, so I think I think it's a generally good idea. Um, all right. So essentially now what we need to do to compute the next row, right? To compute the next row. Uh, so let's actually define it somewhere here. We'll have to iterate, uh, and we have to iterate starting like from from the second one. Actually, we have to start from the second one, but maybe not. So maybe we can also try to make it uh, make it wrap around. If you know what I mean, so basically the neighbor for for the left one will wrap around to the uh, end of the array. Um, not sure if that's canonical because uh, I've never read anything about rule one one zero. So to be fair, I never read this Wikipedia article. The only thing I know about rule one one zero is that this is the table, this is how you replace, and this is how you iterate. That's it. <laughs> so. Why do you need to read? Why do you even have so much text about it in here? Like seriously, like it's just, it's, that's that's all. Is there, is there any any other things you need to know about it? I don't think so. Like just implement it. <laughs> yes, I'm dumb. Um, yeah, but it is what it is. Okay, so let's start iterating. <sighs> so we're iterating for row size. So maybe I should actually iterate starting from one, all right? So you have uh, neighbors from left to right. But furthermore, you also should, right, if you have something like this, it's going to be uh, like that. We're going to start iterating from here and the indices actually go uh, like this, zero, one, two, three, four. Uh, and the size, the row size, uh, row size in this case is equal to five. So we iter start iterating from one because we want to have left and right neighbors and we sh should stop iterating like at three. And three is essentially uh, less than row size, less than row size, but actually minus one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so it's essentially minus one. Right, so yeah, yeah. so we, we're going to iterate from one to three. So in case of five, it's going to be that and yeah, that, that's pretty much it. That's pretty much it. Cool. So now, uh, once we start iterating, once we start iterating, we need to uh, take the cell, uh, cell i minus one, right? This cell, uh, then cell i, and cell a plus one, and we need to turn these three cells into a pattern, right? And we already have a macro for that, so I can literally just take a pattern. Uh, right, and turn, oh my god, and turn all of that into a pattern. Then, once I have a pattern, I can look it up in the patterns table. Right, I can use it as an index in the patterns table. Uh, that didn't really work well, but I tried my best. Uh, and basically reassign the mapping back to the original cell in here, like that. You see what I mean? Uh, maybe it would make sense to actually have an index here, something like index, right, like that, uh, yeah, and then just use it like that, also make it const, and there we go, there we go. A style, yeah, A style sometimes doesn't work well, but sometimes it does. 
And uh, there you go. So this is how we compute the next row, I suppose. This is how we do that. Um, so let me see if this entire thing compiles. Uh, maybe it does not compile. We're about to find out. So it should be called cells. Uh, cells. Cool, it does compile. So uh, now what we need to do, we need to iterate several times. First of all, we need to generate the row, the initial row. It's going to be a random row. And then uh, let's say that we're going to iterate uh, like 10 times. Right. Um, overwrite i minus 1. No. According to this picture, you have to overwrite the center one. That's it. Uh, okay, so... So we're gonna iterate how many? Like, let's say 10 times, right? 10 times. Uh, we're gonna print a row uh, like this, and then we're gonna compute the next one. Next row. And uh, we're gonna do that 10 times. And uh, let's just try to run that. And nothing happened, yay! Because I never fucking returned the uh, result, did I? Oh yeah, so I should actually overwrite the next instead of the previous. So I construct in cells out of the previous and then I overwrite the next one. Right, so, and that should work now. Let's take a look if it's gonna work now. Uh, I forgot to reveal, let's actually keep rebuilding this entire stuff. And there we go! Does it look familiar? You have this triangle appearance. You can clearly see this triangle appearance like in the in this case. Right. So there is a lot of triangle patterns. But what if we make the uh, row a little bit bigger, like around 30, right? So and also maybe increase the amount of iterations. So let's actually introduce iterations. And let's say that you're gonna have like 100 of iterations. Uh, iterations. Uh -huh. So 100 of iterations and there we go. Oh shit, that's very interesting. It starts to converge into like repeating pattern. That's very interesting. By the way, it's, it's kind of difficult to see where like rows actually end. So I could probably replace spaces with dots, but it kind of makes it a little bit noisy in my opinion. Yeah, you see, it kind of makes it a little bit noisy. Um, and I don't particularly like that. So maybe I'm gonna use spaces, but when I print the row, I'm gonna do put C. Uh, STD out, put C. I'm gonna do like that, so we can see the boundaries of this thing. Increase the row size. I already increased it, didn't I? Uh, I can make it 50 if you want to, uh, like twice. So yeah, makes it a little bit bigger. So that's pretty interesting. A cellular automata, a tomato, cellular tomato. Just use OpenGL and mesh shaders. Yeah, maybe like doing that in OpenGL would be kind of cool. Um, <sighs> That's not bad. That's not bad at all. But because of the uh, fact that we uh, render things at the center, uh, the cells at the edges become empty and they will never actually sort of engage in an actual computation. Uh, one thing I want to do is to rub things around. Rub things around. Uh... Can you find the cycles of given length? Uh, maybe if the size of the row is not bigger than 64, I could use the state of the row as an index, right? I could use it as an index and maybe I like, well, if I'm gonna make it 64, that means I'll have to have an array of like a very huge size, but maybe I can use hash table. So essentially I could use the state of the row as an index um, and basically uh, mark particular states as visited, right? Mark particular states as visited and basically traverse the graph of the states and then find a uh, cycle of a particular length. But the more size of the row you have, the more difficult it becomes and more uh, memory uh, you will consume, right? So you can do that, but you will need a lot of memory if you have a huge row. So with a, with a small row like of 10, I think it should be pretty easy. You can actually allocate, you can actually basically allocate array 
where you would have a cell for each individual possible state of this game. Uh, but if it's too big, it's probably... Um, anyways. So here is this thing. So maybe I'm gonna do a little bit of renaming. Why do I have it saved? Uh, do I have it? Yeah, it's kind of interesting. Sometimes I save the compilation uh, buffer. It doesn't really make much sense to me. Um, okay. So let's rename this entire stuff. I want to kind of rename it to rule uh, 110. Uh, right, I'm going to remove that. And now it's going to be just main rule 110, like that. Uh, so let me also introduce C flags. I'm going to introduce C flags. I'm going to put them here. flags and uh, I guess yeah we're gonna put all in here and it's gonna be a rule 110 so here's the rule 110 when you try to build something like this right it will give you that uh, rule 110 gives you that as well why does it save it did I accidentally save it I think I accidentally save it from time to time okay so let's introduce something like quick start and in a quick start, we're gonna have a console. Hold on. We're gonna do a make. Uh, no phony. Uh, maybe I'll introduce phony a little bit later. Or maybe you can do that. Because it's open source, am I right? Uh, git init. Alright, so git init. Mm -hmm. So I also need to git ignore. Git ignore this entire thing. Drill one one oh. Mm, 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 mm. Ready, set, go. Uh, so let me create uh, a repo where we're going to put all of that. A tomato. <laughs> Uh, a collection of different cellular automata, atom yeah, implementations for recognition purposes. I think that's a pretty good description. Automata. I'll never learn. Um, right. Uh, so this one is going to be public. Okay. Let's add the remote. Uh, this is going to be default remote where we're going to push things and yeah. So, and the thing is officially pushed. Feel free to give it a star. Leave like and subscribe. Uh, all right. So, uh, what's the project? What's the project? Exploring different server. Okay. So, update CMD project um, like this. Source code. Uh, mm -hmm. And there we go. So, if you want to check it out, yeah, you can do it here. Um, <clears throat> So what's going to be the next one? What's going to be the next one we want to take a look at? So to be fair, like two-dimensional cellular atom automata are would like would be better if we had some graphical visualization. Um, if you know what I mean, some sort of a graphical visualization. I could probably visualize all of that using SDL, but. Eh, <laughs> I wonder how you, would you like visualize all of that using shaders, right? So essentially, can you even easily do that with the shaders? How would you do that? So especially with the fragment shaders. Oh shit! Can you take the the state of the board and basically create a texture out of this thing, right? And on the level of fragment shaders, actually, <laughs> oh shit, that's actually a very interesting idea. So basically a fragment, uh, knowing the size of the cell that you want to draw, the fragment will determine which cell it is 
and then it will look up itself in the texture, right? It will look up itself in the texture and draw in the corresponding like color and whatnot. Use pixels as cells, uh, yeah, in 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 the texture. In the texture, you could probably use pixels as cells, right? And basically, different states of the cells are going to be different colors of the cells. As far as I know, maybe in texture you can actually store whatever data, right? So yeah, if you say that the pixel of a texture is like one byte, I, I'm pretty sure you can say, you can say something like that. Um, yeah, that's that's pretty interesting. Huh. Mm-hmm, but I wonder how much time it will take for me to figure that out. Mm -hmm. So we'll, we'll see, we'll see. <sighs> Maybe we can try that. Maybe we can try that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I'm just afraid it's gonna to take too much time, but at the same time, if I'm gonna enjoy that time, right, if I'm gonna enjoy that time, is it a wasted time? <laughs> Imagine like spending like five hours figuring out uh, how to do that, and then the only cellular automaton that you implemented on the stream is gonna be rule 110. <laughs> this sounds like a, such a fucking classic toting stream, uh, so maybe that's exactly what we should do. <laughs> Oh yeah, for to make sure that I will definitely not be able to to have it done on the stream, I should use Vulcan instead of OpenGL. Yes, that's a good idea. <laughs> uh, the, the problem is that I'm not even sure. Yeah, yeah, collection by the way. <laughs> I'm not even sure if Vulcan works on my machine. Um, oh shit, okay. So let's make a cup of tea. Five hours to read the file, yeah. Fucking classic. That's why I'm unemployed, by the way. That's why I'm unemployed. Because I take too much time to implement such simple things. Uh, Alright, I'm gonna make a cup of tea. A tomato becomes no tomato. It becomes potato. Mm. Uh, how everyone is doing? By the way, have you guys implemented ever any cellular automata? Atom automata? 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 Cellular automata. Hello, APU Contalde. Welcome to the stream. You have? Nice. Cool. Mm, Alright, so I'm gonna go to the kitchen and uh, turn on my kettle. And uh, then I'm gonna be back and we tr will try to set up the OpenGL shit and we'll see how much time it will take. So to be fair, it shouldn't take that much time because the setup is pretty straightforward, right? The setup is pretty straightforward. I will just have to set up the quad, uh, the quad and just render everything in the texture of that quad. So yeah, uh, let's go. I'm gonna be back super quick. Don't worry about it. Shut. Are you ready? Mm. So, uh, what should we use? JLFW, as usual. Do people still use JLFW, or uh, they came up with yet another OpenGL initialization library? <laughs> Um, so how many OpenGL initialization libraries do we have in the wild? It feels like there's shit ton of them, it, and every time I look into OpenGL, uh, they come up with another one, like, yes, because the previous ones were not good enough. So, 
uh, they came up with Vulkan. Oh, okay. So does Vulkan also standardize the way of initializing on different platforms or does it not give a shit? Because it's created by the same people who don't do any actual development. Um, so I, I don't know. I never tried Vulkan, so I don't know. So I remember Provot was talking about EGL, um, which is like a basically standardiz standardization uh, yeah, yeah, so it's a, it's an enterprise gen generation. <laughs> uh, yes, that, that one. Um, yeah, definitely that one. <laughs> mm. So let's let's do main. Uh, did I already create main that now? Main that Oh shit, my T is ready. <laughs> JLFW. Uh, yes, let's do include JLFW, JLFW 3.h, and uh, let's just do it like this. Uh, boom. So, how should I call this um, thing? So, visualizer, right? So, it's a visualizer like using OpenGL. Um, I don't know, let's, let's just call it Viz, right? So, and I feel like th that we should reuse this visualizer for different kinds of cellular automata. Automata, a cellular automata. Um, so let me also uh, include it here. So it's gonna be just Viz. Uh, and I might as well just put it like that. Uh, Zuzin, have you heard about GNU patterns? Uh, wildcards, I mean. I don't remember how they're called, to be fair. Uh, so here's this flag, and I think we can use package config uh, C flags GLFW3. GLFW3. Is it is it just flags or libs? Oh yeah, so to actually link with GLFW, you just need to link with GLFW. Don't you don't even need to have any special flags. Maybe because of that, I'm gonna just do L G L F W. This is not how you spell it. G L F W, and that's it. So that's gonna be the whole thing. GNU wildcard FreeBSD compatibility. Yeah, uh, Mr. Plots will kill me if it's not compatible with uh, FreeBSD. Uh, F A. Oh yeah, is that? I mean, the compiler will tell me. You're using OpenGL. You are using a penguin, so I have to subscribe. Did it say a penguin? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much for eight months of uh, tier uh, tier one subscription and welcome to our epic a penguin club. Dab, dab. Yes. Uh... <clears throat> Um, how were you able to change the name of the file with ls minus l? Uh, so this is not my ls minus la. It's a, it's called drent. Uh, drent. Uh, eh? No drent. D D red. Yeah. Yeah. This one. Yeah. There we go. It's a, it's a file manager. I'm using this thing. All right. Uh, two, 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 two. GNU. Yes. You have anything against GNU? To be fair, GNU is shit. <laughs> I do agree with you. Uh, uh, 
Okay, this seems to be working. This seems to be twerking. Uh, so let's split the screen and I'm gonna just use this as a cheat sheet. I'm gonna be cheating a little bit, chat. Please forgive me for my cheating, uh, forcing a CD. Uh, so glfw is gonna be window we create a separate window and there you go we have a window isn't that amazing i think it's got them amazing but i'm not sure why we have to declare window right here because we're programming in the modern c right we're programming in the modern c we can define it where whenever we want so glfw init right and if something like that happens i can just return um you know return minus one but I might as well actually exit one right and maybe it will make sense to do something std error error uh, could not could not initialize glfw initialize oh boy oh boy it's really inconvenient for me for to type uh, like this all right, so what's the next one? Uh, so the next thing we need to do, we need to create a window. Uh, glfw create a window. And to be fair, I would rather look at what we have in the glfw header. So uh, create window. Where is that function? Here is the function that we have to call. So yeah, mm -hmm. let me take a look. Uh, so I'm gonna quickly do think like this, a boom, maybe I'm gonna even do it like that, look at that, look at that beauty. So A style actually kind of helps quite often, so I really like it, because you can just, you know, modify things like that and it very quickly automatically just realigns everything. Uh, not equal, cool, yeah, but I mean, it would fail if I try to run it for the first time, so it's not like... I'm not gonna notice it for a long time and waste an hour of debugging that. It's not that big of an issue. So don't worry about it. It's just a bike shady. Okay, so what's gonna be the size? Uh, so we're gonna have a screen width 8 and screen height 600. 600. So, and let's quickly do this thing like that where I'm gonna replace screen. And this is gonna be like this. So what's gonna be the title? Uh, the title is going to be a tomato, a tomato. So, and a monitor and share, both of them, I think, have to be uh, nulls. I think they both have to be nulls. There we go. Isn't that beautiful? I think it's got them beautiful. Uh, all right, so we created a window, and if window, if window turned out to be a null, right, turned out to be null, uh, we should also say that, sorry, could not create a window. Uh, std error, error, could not create a window. What is this? Windows? <laughs> Sorry. Uh, an exit one. Cool. So what's going to be the next thing? Uh, and also you should not forget to terminate GLFW apparently. Right, so yeah, I don't know why you have to terminate it here, but it is what it is. Um... GLFW is awesome, but it handles uh, events via callbacks and not direct polling like SDL. Yeah, and it's not as bloated as SDL. Um, got him. Dup, dup. Um, I wonder, I think you should be able to poll it yourself. I think there is a, like a mode for polling things. Uh, yeah, you have GLF poll events. Um... Pull all pending events. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Wait for events. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. What will happen if you don't terminate it? I don't know, probably nothing. Probably the operating system will deallocate all of the resources. It's one of those cases of people be being overly cautious when it's not needed. You know, like deallocating all of the memory before exiting or closing all of the files before exiting. Um, yeah, operating system is going to do that for you. <laughs> so. I wonder, like, 
maybe it allocates some resources on GPU, but I'm pretty sure if your program exits and the resources on GPU might be deallocated or might be not, I don't even know. Can you leak memory in your graphics card because you didn't terminate something? I don't think so. I think it's taken care of. Should be, at least. Um... Another cup of tea. Do you guys like tea? I love tea. It's my favorite. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Cup of tea. Mm. All right. So, uh, next thing we have to do, we have to do glfw make context current and we need to make the context current for the window and apparently we don't have to check if this shit fails. So, apparently this function never fails, but let's, uh, let's actually find out. Do you ever fail? No, it never fails. It just never fails. Error, possible errors include glfw not initialized, uh, but how can you... Oh, yeah, how can you get the, the error? So I'm pretty sure maybe there is a function called error, error codes. Uh, yeah, you can have glfw error fun, the function signature for error callbacks. Okay, that's really interesting. Set error callback, you can set an error callback and it will do something. It says the error code, the function says the error callback, which is called when the error uh, code and human readable description each time a uh, glfw error occurs. Hmm, the error code remains set uh, even after the library has been terminated. So the question is then, do I need to do any of these checks then? Well, I do, I need to, I do need to make them, because this thing probably just, uh, just prints something, but you can exit inside of that error. Uh, Alright, but I'm gonna keep that in mind. Uh, all right, let's continue. Whatever, doesn't matter. So, jail of uh, make current context. So we created the window and whatnot, and we should start uh, our event loop. We should start our event loop. So while uh, jail fw window should close, why it shouldn't close, right? We will pull the events, uh, which is kind of interesting. Where do they pull? They never pull the events. Oh, they, they pull the events. Uh, at the end of this entire thing, which is kind of meh, but I mean, why not? Uh, pull events, cool. So then we do gl clear, gl color buffer bit, uh, gl color buffer bit, and then we do glfw swap uh, swap buffers, uh, swap buffers, and it's gonna be a window. I uh, think that's it, pretty much. Will this entire shit compile? We're bound to find out. We're bound to find out. Uh, okay, so we don't have a printf because I forgot to include uh, std.io, std.io, and then std.lib. And we don't have a gl clear because I need to actually... Wait a second, I remember that in one of the... In one of my OpenGL uh, projects, somebody was suggesting to link against special library or something. There's so much stuff with OpenGL I cannot keep even keep track of. Uh, so let me find. I think it was something about yeah OpenGL PP. So it's a post processing. Maybe glue. Maybe something else. Uh, let me see. Probably glue. Uh, yeah, glue. Oh boy, oh boy. Okay, so, and if I'm going to do it like this, so C flags glue, right, it requires this kind of thing, and then if I do libs, uh, yeah, it will require glue, glue, and so on and so forth. So maybe it would make sense for me to actually introduce this kind of stuff. So, uh, gl packages, so it's gonna be glfw and glue 
and essentially um, okay so we're gonna do the following thing package config uh, c flags uh, how do we do that is it gonna be like this uh, gl packages i don't remember what's gonna work on freebsd and to be honest i don't care all right so uh, i'm gonna put it like that so it's gonna be beeps Let's see if it's gonna work now. Um, okay, so that didn't work at all. That actually made it even worse, worse uh, because uh, GLFW has to be three. Uh, okay, so that seems to be working now. And if I take a look at this uh, LDD thingy, uh, it depends on everything in here. Cool. It depends on everything in here. Uh, now, if I try to run this entire stuff, uh, yeah, it creates the window, as you can see. So we have a window. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. So uh, now we probably need to do the uh, the shaders shit, right? So we need to do the shaders shit where we uh, compile the vertex and fragment shader. Um, and then we link them into the program and so on and so forth. So yeah, choose by the way. I also love tea, but I'm out of black tea and drink green now. I hate it. Yeah, green is kind of meh. I don't know. But if, uh, as long as it has the same amount of coffee, and I don't mind it. Mr. Streamer, you forgot the window hints. Did I? Did I forget the window hints? Where where did I forget them? Uh, where are the hints? I don't see the hints to be fair. So there's no... I think this will not on work on macOS. Uh, how do I make it work on macOS? I'm, I'm not sure. What, what exactly is the problem? I don't understand the problem on the bus. I'm really sorry. Um, so, but maybe it's... Uh, the, yeah, the example don't have... I, I'm just following the example. So what is the window hint and what exactly it's needed for specifically on Mac OS? I'm not, I'm not sure. Um, okay, so let's actually not focus on these kind of things, uh, right? And uh, I'm gonna just uh, implement it as it is and then if we have problems, we can fix it on Mac OS. Okay, I think if we're gonna just, like stop every time we have something like that, we're never gonna implement anything. All right, um, yeah. So first, uh, I wanna be able to actually work with the shaders uh it's implementing uh, we fix it later it's not hard to do okay ah, cool uh so let me try to slurp a file right because i need to be able to read the shader files from the um from the file path so let's actually implement slurp the file slurp the file const char file path uh, I could probably finally extract all of that into my own separate library, but uh, I, I keep losing it. Like I don't know. So I need I need to have aids for OpenGL, I suppose. Uh, <clears throat> all right. So we're gonna open the file. Okay, so and then we're gonna close it in here. If file null, mm, so I kind of want to have a function that fails automatically for me. Um, something like panic error null, and I can say could not read, uh, could not read file uh, as file path and I don't have to think about it like every time something fails I can just say uh, panic error null right and this is the message that will be displayed there and it will automatically just print it on the standard input then also print the message from error null and uh, then crash the whole application so I never have to think about it so let's go and implement something like that I think it's a good idea so panic error no right so what it will accept it will accept fmt and then the rest of the shit and the rest of the shit so it's going to be very addict function um very addict function so cstd arg cstd arg 
Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I think it's just uh, std arg. Yes, it's just std arg. So uh, va list uh, is going to be args va begin. I keep forgetting va. It's not it's, it's not va begin. It's it's actually va start. Right. So it's va start. Um, can I stop for a moment and rant a little bit how uh, variadic functions in C are such a poo-poo? They're literally poo-poo. And that's it. That's, that's the end of my rant. Thank you very much. <laughs> ah, they're so bad. Holy shit. And they're totally not type safe. And imagine having type safety in, in 2021. Am I right? Uh, so this one is going to be arcs. Um... I wanted to link a very simple lib for login. You mean libc? libc is a very simple uh, lib for login. All right, so we have that. And uh, after that, we should do what? Uh, we should use one of these functions, fv um, man, fvprintf. I think that's, I think it's vfprintf. Yeah, that's what we need. So basically, this function accepts variadic list, right? It accepts variadic list, and this is exactly what we want to use here to report an error. So we're going to print everything to the std error, then we're going to use the format, and then we're going to use the variadic list. Uh, but this is just a message, right? First, we have to do something like fprintf, maybe like this, uh, error. Uh, two, 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 and we're going to say yeah something like this so you have an error and then we print this entire thing uh, and after the words i do std error like this s and this is a new line and this is where i can do a standard error error no and then we can just do exit one there we go so this is panic error no uh which lets us do all this stuff automatically we don't have to worry about it like couldn't read file that and so on and so forth um, alrighty, so uh, now we need to allocate a certain amount of um, memory. To know how much memory we need to allocate, we need to measure the size of the file, so we have to use one of these fseq, uh, yeah, classic fseq. Whens, I like this word for some reason, I don't know why. All right, so I need to go to the end of the file, All right? So it's going to be f offset is zero. And I think it's seek end, right? Seek end. And if this uh, entire thing failed, we should also do error, like panic error no. Panic error no. Um, so after that, we can use ftl to grab, to grab the size. Right, and the size is going to be something like this. But if the size uh, is less than zero, right, we can panic error no yet again. So every time something goes wrong, we can just panic error no. Could not read file. All right, so uh, once we've got that, we can try to allocate uh, a memory for a buffer. Right, so we're going to do malloc uh, of this specific thing. But if buffer is equal to null, that means we couldn't read the bu buffer because we couldn't allocate the memory. And by the way, error null will actually tell us that we don't have enough memory. So we can just keep repeating this entire thing. Um, you know, I have an interesting idea. What, what if we introduce a macro? Uh, slurp file panic, right? Slurp file panic, where I just literally take this entire thing and put it like that, <laughs> because I'm gonna be saying the same thing over and over again uh, anyway. So slurp file panic, right? Slurp file panic, and then at the end of the function I can do undef <laughs> slurp file panic, and yeah, I think it's a it's a good idea generally. Uh, I might as well actually simplify it syntactically a little bit, uh, just do it without this parenthesis, right? So, and it's going to be as simple as this, uh, right? So, something like that. Yeah. Mm, yeah, it's pretty cool. 
so we have panic error notes, file panic. And what's interesting is that this particular thing can be reused a lot in the future. Yeah, it's basically, you think, like, Go is created by the creators of C. Well, at least one of them, Ken Thompson. So that's why Go is like that. People think that if error equals nil is somehow a Go thing, but this is because everyone forgot about C. It's actually a C thing that Go inherited, right? Come on. Um, it's just like Go started to force you to handle that. C doesn't, didn't really force you to handle all of that, but Go forces you. But uh, people who program in C a lot, they still program in it like in Go. Um, all right. So we have this. Um, okay. Mm, yeah, and that's why it became apparent. Like in C, at least you can ignore it, right? But in Go, somewhat enforces. It enforces you by asking you to not ignore results. I think. I think this is how it enforces you to do that. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's how it does that. All right. So um, now I need to do another F sick, right? Another F sick. And I'm gonna do F6 set, right? Which will set it to the beginning of the file. And then we can try to, uh, what the fuck? Uh, we can try to read this entire shit. F read. Okay, so I'm reading the entire thing. Uh, right, and so I'm reading that into the buffer. The size of a single element that I'm reading is essentially one, and the amount of elements I'm reading is this, and I'm reading all of that from F. Uh, all right, and if an error has happened within the file, uh, we do slurp file panic. So, <laughs> this is such a funny macro. <laughs> slurp file panic. Um, okay. Uh, after that, uh, we can simply, I guess, return uh, return the buffer, right? So we can return the buffer. I wonder if f close um, can fail. Yeah, f close seems to be also able to fail. Uh, actually, less than zero. Slurp file panic. Cool. So how do I like this function? Uh, your navigation skills in Vim are insane. I know. I, it's years of experience. It's literally years of experience. Uh, cool. Uh, so will we be able to actually compile this entire stuff? Uh, we are not able to compile this entire stuff because I forgot semicolons and str error. So I have to probably include string.h and then error no and uh, what do we have? Ftel. Oh yeah, so it has to be like this, of course. Cool. Uh, bye bye, Anabosu. See you around. Panapudi, hello. Welcome. Welcome to the stream. Um, Gay Lolo. What's up? What's up as well? Mm, really glad to see you all today. Alrighty, alrighty, alrighty. So I want to check if the slurp file works correctly. So I'm going to create a second main uh, where I'm going to just slurp myself. Go slurp myself yourself. Uh, slurp uh, file pan, not really slurp file pan, but just slurp file. And we're gonna provide, uh, I guess, ourselves. Right. So here is that. Oh shit! This is quite important. I forgot to um, no terminate my buffer. And to be able to no terminate my buffer, I need to allocate more uh, than the size, right? Because I need uh, space for um, for zero. Uh, and after that, I have to do buffer size equal slash zero. There we go. So this is how we're going to do all of that. Uh, maybe it would make sense to do that after we check for the errors. So that looks okay. Uh, and then we're going to do print f uh, s. All right. Yesu, 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 ekavai edesu. And uh, let's recompile this into th stuff. And if I try to uh, run this thing, uh, yeah, we managed to actually slurp ourselves and we managed to print ourselves. So we have a function, pretty convenient function that actually uh, slurps. It doesn't suck, it slurps. <laughs> ah, I'm sorry. Uh, 
non-existing file. <laughs> and <laughs> so sorry chat. <laughs> uh, okay, could not read file, non-existing file, no such file or directory. So this thing uh, seems to be working. So it even reports the errors correctly, which is nice. I like that. Really, really like that. And I'm pretty sure you should be able to uh, cool quine. Yeah, I know. It's <laughs> uh, quine through uh, C preprocessor. Nice, to, nice, to, nice. All right, so here's the thing, and yeah. So the, the reason why we needed all that is because we wanted to be able to slurp the um, the shaders, right? We're gonna have uh, something like, uh, I forgot how to, how you call them, right? So something like viz frag. Yeah, it's actually GL cell shader, and we're also gonna have viz uh, vert. And it's also JLSL, so we're gonna have these kind of things, this frank and this vert. Um, okay, so let's simply add a function that compiles the shader. Um, mm, 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 mm. Hello, Antevia, welcome to the stream. I hope you're pronouncing everything correctly. Hello, hello. Uh, so, GL create shader, right? Uh, gl uint compile shader file and we're gonna provide const char file path I'm gonna sneeze by the way <laughs> the fuck was that uh, anyway <clears throat> so then we're gonna accept gl in the <laughs> thank you thank you so much uh, shader type Where do you free uh, the memory after a malloc? I don't free it. I let the operating system do that for me. You see what I did there? See what I did there? Oh. Uh, okay. <clears throat> it's not a. It's not a leak. Uh, the operating system was clean for it. Sounds like a bad idea. Why? Why does it sound like a bad idea? Mm, array AI? Eh? I understand. So why is it why is that a bad idea? I understand. It's it's not leaking. Seriously, the operating system will actually free it after the uh, after the program exits, right? So, I see any problems? What are you guys talking about? Um. Okay. So let's create a shader. <laughs> so this is going to be a, a shader type. All right. So and we're going to have it a shader. <laughs> Using this as a garbage collector. Exactly. I mean, come on, seriously. I'm pretty sure people who implemented Linux know how to manage memory better than I do, right? <laughs> I'm pretty sure. Too risky. Why? What? Like, <laughs> I don't know. I provided my arguments on why I don't do that. I haven't heard any arguments from you so far. So your, all of your arguments so far are just eh, meh, eh, 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 no, but I provided the arguments because the operating system cleans that for you. What's your argument for, for not doing that? Come on, hit me with your best argument. Um, all right. People, stop being so dogmatic. Stop, please. All right, so we created the shader. Um, Mm -hmm. So the next thing we need to do, we need to uh, probably read the file. Yeah, so let's actually do the source thing here. Uh, source, uh, slurp the file. I don't trust my operating system. Well, fair enough. Um, <clears throat> B 
people think uh, actually think that it's a bad practice or something, but it's not that unusual to do. Yeah. And people still think it because I, I think this is because they are taught that in universities, right? So they are taught that you have to always clean up after yourself for whatever reason, right? But it's actually pretty common to not do that. The only argument against that I can see is because uh, it screws up your report in Valgrind. Right. When you're trying to find an actual memory leaks, when you uh, allocate a memory and don't deallocate it in a loop, for example, this is an actual problem, an actual memory leak, it might be difficult to read the Valgrind reports because of these kind of things. This is a good argument, but I quite rarely hear that. What I hear is the dogmatic stuff like, ah, oh, you have to be a good citizen and clean up after yourself, but nobody's actually providing like any good arguments. Right. So... All right, so here's the source. And da, 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 da. so, and then we have to use a gel shader source to actually attach it to the shader. Uh, attach it to the shader. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now you have to actually call gel. Good citizen, <laughs> yeah. Imagine being a good citizen. Uh, so count, I think count accepts how many uh, elements you have so in that case it's going to be just one just don't do it when you have no s like embedded exactly exactly but to be fair in case of embed i never did embedded but in case of embedded don't you just have the whole memory available to you and you kind of know how much memory exactly you have and you operate on exact addresses anyway so you kind of like implementing your own memory allocator anyway, don't you, right? So you just have array already allocated for you by hardware and you just do whatever you can with what you have, right? So it's kind of a different completely situation. Depends on the hardware, yeah, of course. But I never did had uh, like embedded, so that's why I'm asking. But that's what it feels like to me. Uh, mm, yeah. My professional do not let me not clean the memory. I read procs for STM32 controllers. Oh, I see. Well, yeah, it's it's also a good point in my opinion. Right? It's just like it could be force of a habit. Uh, we have a raid from Adam C. Yunis. I hope I pronounced your name correctly. Welcome, welcome to our epic. What are we doing actually? I don't remember what we're doing. <laughs> Hello, Raiders. Hello, hello. So I guess the the idea of the stream was to explore different cellular atom, automata, atom, automaton. I don't know how to pronounce that word, right? Um, but then I thought, why not visualize them with OpenGL? And uh, yeah, I went into a huge rabbit hole. And yeah, how's it going? It's going quite well. I'm just doing OpenGL nonsense and talking about memory allocations and embedded and stuff like that. All right, so uh, what I'm trying to do right now, I'm trying to compile a shader. Uh, all right, so I have to provide the source, and I think in case of the length, I can just say no. There we go. So I attached the shader. Mm. Conway's Game of Life is one of my favorite things. Uh, it's the most popular cellular automaton, but we're actually trying to look at the ones that are not as well known uh, as uh, Conway's Game of Life, right? Because there's more than just Conway's Game of Life. And the second popular and well-known uh, cello automaton is probably rule 100, uh, like 110, right? Which is actually one-dimensional cello automaton, right? So if Conway's Game of Life is two-dimensional one, this one is one-dimensional. And I guess it's the simplest cello automaton that is also Turing complete. So essentially, if you run it, right, so you have a row of different cells and the next row is computed based on the previous one. So this is not two-dimensional one, it's actually one-dimensional and uh, each individual row is like next generation and you get this interesting triangular patterns uh, all the time, so it's actually pretty cool. So yeah, uh, if anyone is interested about this particular cellular automaton, you can actually read about this one here. 
Uh, yes, yes, yes. Okay, so, but so, uh, right now we're just trying to implement some visualization using OpenGL because uh, drawing all of that on the, in the terminal is kind of, it's kind of boring. Look, I mean, come on, seriously, it's 2021. We have very powerful GPUs in 2021 that we can utilize to make something cool. All right, so, and I'm still using OpenGL 2.0, right? Not, not even Vulkan in 2021. Uh, so I'm attaching, I'm slowly attaching my source code to the shader. So the next thing I need to do, I need to compile the shader, all right? So I guess it just, yeah, it's just a simple function that accepts the shader that you want to compile, nothing particularly fancy. Uh, nothing particularly fancy, and there we go. Cool. But that may fail, right? So compilation of the shader may fail, so we have to use this uh, get shader information function, right? So we can get info, I think compiler status. Yeah, I think you need to get the compiler status. Uh, so so I'm, I think I'm gonna use it as a cheat sheet. Forgive me my cheating, I'm gonna just do it like that. Um, okay, so thank you, thank you, see you around, bye bye. Um, all right. Oh, shit. Oh, fuck. Oh, shit. Oh, fuck. So we need to do, do gl get shader av and I provide the shader and I take its compilation status. And um, so I also have to provide, I'm pretty sure, I have to provide a pointer to the integer of the parameter. Yeah, so it has to be something like gel int compiled right and this is what i have to do compiled right and then if this thing was not compiled mm, it's like when a cell is procedurally generated based on the cells around it basically yes basically and there are different rules that produce different behaviors of the cellular automatas so automata i still don't know automata yes cellular automata um yeah okay so we also want to allocate a little bit of a message All right. so we're gonna have gl size i uh message size All right and then we'll provide gl char a message and it's gonna be one kilobyte and i kind of want to allocate all of that in a static memory right so not on the stack but maybe allocating one kilobyte on the stack is not as you know expensive in 2021 uh, so uh, let me see so this is originally zero uh, gl get shader info log we provide the shader then the size of uh, message the size of message then uh, the actual message size and finally the message itself Right, and uh, we are ready to actually print this entire thing. So it's going to be printf. Um, it's going to be like this. Mm, where is build system in C? Uh, somewhere on GitHub. Uh, I don't know what you mean. So what is your question? Your question is why don't I use my build system in C for this specific project? Uh, if that's what you're trying to say, to trying to ask, it's because this build system experimental and uh, it's not officially released and I'm using it in a very, like, in a single project as an experiment because I'm not sure if it's generally applicable. Does it make sense? If that's what you're trying to ask, I'm not sure what you're trying to say. Oh, no, what's up? Welcome to the stream. Uh, all right, so what we have to do here, we have to do a message size, then we have to print the message. So let's see what's going to happen. Uh, maybe I have to do that on here, so it's going to be std error, and then I'm going to do exit one. There we go. Uh, so that's pretty much it. So we managed to compile both of the shares. Cool. So after everything is compiled, uh, yeah, we can try to link them. Mm. All right, let me try to compile this entire thing and just see what's going what's to happen. Uh, make minus b. So it does not compile because 
GL create shader implicit declaration. Ah, I do remember this one. You have to like use that macro. Uh, you have to use that macro. Just a second. I think yeah, this one. This one. Mm, I'm pretty sure you have to do that. So shader type and another slurp file. Uh, just slurp file without any panning. Okay, so it seems to be compiled. Seems to be compiling. And, and now, uh, what I'm gonna try to do, uh, I'm gonna do gl uh, compile, yeah, gl u int, compile shader file. And what we're trying to compile here, we're trying to compile the vertex file. And it's gonna be gl uh, vertex shader, I suppose. Uh -huh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. GL compile. Uh, is that GL create server uh, shader? I think it's a create uh, GL create shader. It accepts the shader type and what kind of types do we have? We have a vertex shader and a fragment shader. Sure. Uh, frag. Fragment. Uh, fragment. Cool. Um, Cool. So let's try to compile that, and uh, we have unused variables, but that's totally okay. And let me try to run it and see how it fails. Okay, syntax error expected end. <laughs> nice, nice syntax error. Cool. <laughs> ah, all right. So let's actually try to provide like more information, at least like where exactly. Um, this entire thing has failed, like at least like in the file. Uh, so let me try to do something like this. So it's going to be file path. Uh, I think that should be a little bit better, right? Uh, vert and it doesn't even properly jump here. Yeah. Uh, so cool. Okay, let me actually steal some vertex stuff. So I'm going to use uh, the usual gray code generation of the quad. Um, two, 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 two. So do I even have it anywhere? I should have it somewhere. Mm, so this is a scene. Okay, this is a scene and I don't really care about it. Uh, and the vertex for that one is gonna be, yeah. So let me, let me use this share. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna put it like that. And I'm gonna query replace, uh, actually query replace like this, with nothing, and that should be all right. So essentially what this thing does, it uses GL vertex ID to generate the vertices for the, um, uh, for the quad. Generate the vertices for the quad. All right, let's try to uh, recompile this entire thing. And now it fails in the fragment share, which is perfect. Okay, which is exactly what I wanted anyway. Uh, so let's do the uh, fragment share. So the fragment share is going to be very similar. Uh, yeah, we're going to have this version in here. Uh, and actually use output as a color okay should probably probably have to do it like that and uh, then we're gonna have a main then we're gonna have a main okay can I query replace this in test it like this okay and output uh, I don't know I don't really know what to keep it as an output all right so maybe it's gonna be vector 4. Uh, zero, 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 one. There we go. So if I try to run this entire stuff, okay. So both of the shaders successfully compiled, right? So, and I can even try to add some compilation er errors there, right? And uh, they will fail, and they will tell me exactly where they happen. So I know it's invert and line nine. Yeah, so at least I can navigate to the error and do something about it, which is which is nice. Okay, so we know how to compile shaders. So now we need to link the shaders, right? So how do we link the shaders? Did I actually remove uh, my thing? 
Uh, I think I removed it. Okay, so... Mm, let me go to the example. Wait, it's it's not gel account. Gel create share. Gel create share. Come on. Come on, website. Come on. Why are you so annoying? Website, just work. Come on. You can do that. I believe in you. All right. So, uh, cool. Once we have all of that, let, let's actually create uh, the following thing. Mm, viz.c viz.c uh, gluint link program and we're gonna accept gluint vert shader gluint frag shader and we're gonna actually you know, you know link all of that uh, to, 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 to. so let me do a little bit of that Mm -hmm. I haven't used variables. Yes, I do haven't used variables. That's totally okay. You know, chat, I really want to pee. <laughs> I'm really sorry. <laughs> yeah, fucking damn it. Uh, because I drank too much tea and too much water, but yeah. Uh, so let's make like two minutes, I think. Uh, how it's showing the position of an error in shader file. Uh, that's what I got from OpenGL. So essentially when you... Uh, when you compile a shader, if the compilation of shader fails, you can query a human readable message from the OpenGL library and you can print it. I just printed whatever the uh, OpenGL library provided to me. And obviously OpenGL library is the one who compiled my shader. So they know where the error has happened. It's like compiler knows where an error has happened because the compiler is the one who's compiling the, pro the code. It's the same thing. Uh, so, it also gives you a warning if it compiles successfully. Okay, it's really interesting. I never tried to check the information about the status when it compiles successfully. Maybe I should try to do that. Actually, that's that's a very interesting idea. Let's actually try to do that. Uh, what if I do it like that? Right. So essentially, I'm going to try to print the message always <laughs> and uh, exit only if it fails. Uh, let me see what's going to happen. Uh, well, it didn't print and didn't give me anything. So, yeah. Uh, I'm going to do it like that. Okay. Hmm. <laughs> Okay, so let's make a small break, and you guys have fun.
Yo, what's up? Welcome back. Two back. Uh, we have a raid from Donho. Thank you, thank you so much for the raid and welcome raiders to Epic Open Geo Club. Uh, like if you put precision medium float, which is only available in WebGL, it will just warn you and compile successfully, so it'd be... Oh, okay. Interesting. Um, <clears throat> interesting, interesting. I see what you mean. Uh, Alrighty, so uh, let's link the program. I, I should probably, like, I keep re-implementing this uh, thing over and over again. I should probably extract it to some sort of a template. Uh, because I kind of tired of it. <laughs> uh, all right. So when we are linking a program, uh, yeah. Okay. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh huh. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So gl u int program gl uh, create program. Uh huh. So after that, we can attach all the shaders to the program, like vert shader and frag shader. And then we can just say link, link the program, link the program, cool. Uh, and then we can do a similar thing as with the compilation. Um, linked, I think it has to be gl int, of course, it's initially going to be zero. Uh, gl get program information uh, gl link status linked of course it's gonna be like that if not linked uh, we'll have to again allocate some memory on the stack which is okay uh, message length initially zero this one is gonna be gl char message we're gonna have one kilobyte of the memory allocated on the stack uh, and program, program, info log, we provide the program. So then the size of the buffer allocated on the stack, uh, then pointer to the variable that will store the message. Let's call it size because it's called size in another function. And the buffer itself, there we go. So after that, we can just print that. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna just steal a little bit of code from here. Um, uh, so, but we don't have a file path because the, all of the files has been compiled. So uh, let's put something like program linking and uh, we're going to actually space a little bit and that should finally work. After everything is done, uh, we should be able to return the program uh, from, from the function and all of that should compile. It does in fact compile. So uh, here's how we're going to do that. So here's a vertex fragment and then glu int program link program and we're going to provide a vertex and fragment. And I'm thinking maybe I can even just inline this entire stuff. Like why can't I just inline this? Just inline it for head. Yesu, 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 kawaii, desu, like that. And there we go. Isn't that amazing? I think it's good. I'm fucking amazing. All right. So if I try to run that, it seems to be working. Cool. <clears throat> Just in line. Exactly. Just in line. Um, so after that, I think you should use the program, right? You, ha you have to say GL use program. GL um, use program. Oh my god, website just work. Oh, it's so annoying. Come on, come on, come on, website. I believe in you. Uh -huh. mm. So here's the program. And I think now we should not complain about unused variables. There we go. So everything is used, everything is okay. I think we have to also use gl draw array. Uh, I think it's arrays, right? gl draw arrays so we're gonna have first specify the study index of enabled array um, mm -hmm, so I guess that's what we'll have to do um, so here's all buffers uh, gl draw 
So we're gonna use like a, 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 the old mod where I draw quads because uh, it's just easier with the shader that I have. So first start at zero and we're gonna have like four of these things. There we go, so I'm drawing a race and that should just give me nothing. It gave me nothing. Let me take a look at, uh, at the vertex shader now. Uh, so uh, actually fragment shader. Let's now change the output color to red. And if the screen will become red after that, we're gonna call it a success. It is in fact a success. You know what would be, what would be even cooler? Uh, I think reloaded, reloading the shaders. Mm. You can use in dark mode? Really? That's a pretty pathetic dark mode, <laughs> not gonna lie. Um, Alrighty. Um, so, one of the things we can try to do to reload the shaders. Uh, to reload the shaders. Uh, I don't remember how to reload the shaders. I think. I think you have to like un. Can you unuse the program? So if you have jail use program, right? Do you have to unuse it? Um, oh my god! Jail use program. This website is really annoying. Mm. Mm, how do you delete the okay so here is the delete program deletes program object freezes the memory and invalidates the name associated with the program object specified oh by the way can i delete shaders after i linked them is that a thing i can do I think I, re I vaguely remember I can do that, so that means I should be able to do something like JS delete shader, uh, vert shader, and frag shader. So let me see if it's gonna work. It seems to be working. So and if I want to reload something, right? I the only thing I need to do here is just uh, you know what? Speaking of, since we're gonna be actually recreating and reloading the files all the time, it probably would make sense to free uh, the source code here as well. So you see, we um, get the source code, uh, we, uh, we compile the shader and then we free the source code. So that way we're not gonna link the memory when we actually reload all the time, um, as you can see. So, but it complains about this thing because there's a const qualifier um, so the question is maybe, maybe the slurp file should not actually put it behind the const qualifier because it's not true, it's modifiable. Um, it is literally not true. So if something modifiable, we shouldn't be worrying about that, so let's free the source. Uh, we could also pre-allocate like static uh, with incompatible pointer type, really. Um, so, what does it say? Ah, I see. I see, I see, I see, I see. I can probably cast this entire thing to appropriate pointer type. Expected this one is going to be just easier to work with in this particular case. Yeah, I think it's totally okay. So, we free all of the resources. Uh, how do I handle uh, events in JLFW? JLFW events input guide mm, keyboard input so we have to set the key callback okay jlfw set key callback jlfw set key uh, set key callback uh -huh. So that makes sense. Do you have experience with networking in C++? No, I have zero experience with C++ and as a matter of fact, programming in general. So I didn't know nothing about programming, I'm really sorry. Uh, especially such a hard language as uh, C++. I think it's an absolutely difficult 
Um, sorry. Okay. Jail of W. So here is that thing. What a what a useful signature. <laughs> I'm pretty sure you can have parameter names in here. Uh, so like, why, why, why would you do that? Like, who the fuck does that, this kind of shit? Okay. Thank you, JLFW, for nothing. Um, holy shit. <laughs> uh, okay, so... Then we attach this entire thing. Uh, key callback. Uh, Let me see. So if JLFW key, uh, can we have like F5? Uh, can we have a F5? Yeah, we, we can have F5, which is which is awesome. Uh, can I could place this entire thing? Uh, so the one with 69 ints is the most readable, I think. I think we need more ints in the signature. Uh, so yeah, let's reload the shaders, I suppose. Um, to reload the shaders, yeah, here's the thing about callbacks. They force you to actually have a global program variable, which is kind of poo, poo in my opinion. It's a poo, poo idea in general, but it is what it is. Um, uh, so like that. Oh shit. Okay. Uh, so before I can reload anything, right, I can just do gel. Um, mm, 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 jail delete program, right? So we're gonna do jail delete program. But Zosin, you have global variable. Zosin, you don't free mallocated memory. Zosin, your all of all of your code is bad because my professor told me so. Ah, Zosin, ah, Zosin, Zosin, we do everything incorrectly. You have to free the memory. You don't. You're not supposed to have global variables. So you do everything against what I've been told in university. Well, congratulations. Welcome to the real life. Um, all right. So we have a program. We delete the program, and I'm gonna just do this entire thing. Uh, it's gonna be like that. Mm. So the problem with this kind of approaches is that compile shader file actually fail unrecoverably. So we'll have to make them fail recoverably. So that's one of the things we'll have to do. We have to we'll have to make them fail recoverably. Uh, Alright, so it failed because yeah, we don't care about any of these things but it didn't really fail that miserably so uh okay let me go to the fragment shader to the fragment shader and let me change the color width uh, i'm gonna change it to something like uh green right i'm gonna change it to something like green and i'm gonna re uh, reload it and it didn't reload anything yay i'm so happy uh so one two three four it just never handles it i'm i'm really happy cool so let me see oh i think i know why because i forgot to use the program yeah i forgot to use the program okay, cool. so now it seems to be working it seems to be twerking i'm gonna go to the fragment and i'm gonna change it to yellow i think this is how you make the yellow yeah there we go so i can change them on the fly that's pretty cool so now i can make it completely white and uh maybe i can make it even purple how about that so that's pretty pogue so I'm capable of reloading the shaders. Hello everyone. Hello Rodriades. Hello everyone who just joined. Ethan Schulman. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So yeah, we have dynamically reloaded shaders and shit. Um, so we also need to do something with GL viewport, if I'm not mistaken, right? So GL viewport. So depending on the size of the window, because I want it to be automatically resized and whatnot at least well maybe not it's kind of difficult to tell maybe it doesn't have to be automatically resized and i'm gonna do it right now so i'm gonna just keep it like this or at least i can actually set wait it also specified the lower left corner of the viewport rectangle in pixels so maybe that may help me to center this entire thing 
Ha. Okay, this is actually this, this give me a pretty cool idea. Mm, this give me a, a, a cool idea. So resize. How about resizing? Uh, resize. Um, is there like a window? Okay, JLFW, JLFW, window resize. Window guide. Cool. Mm. Where's the resize call? Set window resize callback. Yes, that's what I wanted. So uh, we're gonna put it here, All right? And we're gonna have a window size callback. And window size callback is one of those things. Cool. Uh -huh. Might as well actually put it like this. And we're gonna use GL viewport. And here we go. So what I want to do, I want to actually center the viewport at the center of the window, regardless of the size of the window. So this is one of the things I want to have, uh, which means I need to have a half of a width, right? So I need to take half of width of the window, right? And subtract half of a width of the uh, actual screen, right? Uh, something like this. So this is going to be the X position. So similarly, similarly, we're going to have uh, the Y position. So, but instead of width, we're going to have height and height in here. Uh, all right. So that's pretty cool. And then we can just use the screen width and screen height. And I wonder if that's exactly if I understood this function correctly. I'm not sure if I understood this function correctly, but hopefully I did. So now, yes, I did understand it correctly, so it now actually centers it. That's fucking perfect. That's some, something that I always wanted to have. Like, it centers it, like, and yeah, I could probably put it like that. And at any point, I probably can uh, modify this entire thing. Um, so it would be also kind of cool if I could modify this, uh, you know, at runtime as well, but I cannot, unfortunately, but it is what it is. Uh, yeah, I think this size is a little bit better. Um, um, two, 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 two. All right. Uh, interestingly enough. Um, interestingly enough. Um, set frame buffer size callback. Uh, yeah, I, I keep forgetting about that because I work with a lot of different things. Uh, window handling, how is that different? Um, where is it? Uh, set the hand frame buffer resize call back to the specified window, which is called when the frame buffer was specified. Because, oh, because of the geometry and stuff like that. Yeah. Okay, let's just use that one then. Sure. Mm. Okay, cool, thank you. Uh, so I want to get rid of these warnings somehow, and I cannot just remove this function, right? Uh, because this is not how C works. Uh, callback receives screen coordinates, which not uh, be actual pixels. Uh, screen coordinates, it has something to do with, the okay, I see. All right, cool. Thank you, thank you so much. Uh, so, unused parameters, unused parameters. Um, I need to avoid them, unfortunately. Right, so, um, void window, scan code, action, mods, and uh, yeah, now, a new parameter window, it still has a new parameter window, so it's actually avoided here as well. Uh... Mm -mm -mm -mm. What kind of automata? Uh, actually, all of them. Uh, first, I want to finish the visualization, and then uh, we can try different kinds of automata. Um, Apart from Game of Life, we, we may implement Game of Life, uh, but yeah, because the Game of Life is kind of what we're used to. I want to take a look at some other ones. Uh, mm, right. 
Shit. <sighs> so here's an interesting thing about uh, this particular program. If you made a mistake in, a, in one of the shaders, it will crash because this is how we implemented the code, right? This is how we implemented it. Um, so, essentially, I think when you compile in a shader, right, so compile, uh, it shouldn't crash. It sh essentially, it shouldn't try to exit. And maybe the same thing should go with the linking, right? Just don't crash, right? Just don't crash. Uh, right, so, and now if I uh, put this thing in here, it will probably do nothing, right? It will do nothing, but it will tell me that uh, linking within compiled. Okay, so that's kind of interesting. Um, it tries to link with uncompiled and specified shaders, so yeah, maybe we should prevent uh, doing it. Uh, yeah. But maybe th this is okay for now. Maybe this is okay for now. Maybe this is okay for now. Uh, so one of the things we can probably do... We can probably return the shader via the arguments, right? Return shader via the arguments and uh, return boolean indicating whether it's uh, compiled successfully or not compiled successfully. So you shouldn't try to um link it or do something something else with it um if you know what i mean it will be also kind of cool to indicate that the shader has not compiled in the window itself but i'm not sure how difficult it is to do maybe we could have like a separate different program uh for shader compilation uh error if you know what i mean Right. Essentially, if your uh, program failed to compile or failed to link, we switch to already successfully compiled program that spells out something like compilation error or whatnot, or basically indicates somehow that, uh, you know, the compilation error has happened. So that would be actually kind of cool, I think. I think it's an interesting idea, generally. Uh, special com shader compilation uh, visualization. So th that will actually force you to go back into the log and, um, you know, do something about it. I think it's a, I think it's a generally cool idea. What's up, Hewots and Pots? Welcome to the stream. Uh, all right, so let's introduce the visualization thingy. Uh, visualization. So what would be the compilation error pattern? What would be the compilation uh, error pattern? Something like just a red screen or maybe something else uh i'm not quite sure could be a race a red screen um mm -hmm. introduce visualization um, problem so and i also want to get ignore this this thing mm -hmm. Let's start by making these things recoverable. They're already recoverable, but uh, they should return boolean. So, uh, gel you int shader will be returned from this entire thing. So, and this is gonna be boolean, and the program will be returned from this thing. Mm. So, and it would be nice to actually have a special function called reload shaders, right, reload shaders, which doesn't accept anything, and the only thing it does, it tries to do this entire thing. So it tries to delete the program, uh, right, so it's gonna be like this, uh, like this, delete program. And we compile this particular shader. Um, 
glu int. Uh, it's going to divert. Right, so it's going to divert. If you could not compile this entire thing, you basically exit right away. Then the next thing is going to be actually frag. Right. Uh, and the next thing is going to be frag. Was it? Yeah, it was vert and frag. And we're going to return the program out of here. Mm, if this thing did not succeed, if this thing is did not succeed, uh, I will just return this entire stuff. Uh, cool. Um, so essentially, if when any of these steps fails, it doesn't try to perform the next step. Um, then we can say something like successfully reloaded um, the shaders, right? And to be fair, if one of these steps failed, it would be kind of cool to have something like a GL use program uh, fail shader, a fail program, right? So fail program, if you know what I mean. Um, so essentially, it will have a special vis visualization if something has failed. But the thing is, how can I have a like a failed visualization? Um, failed visualization. Mm. It would be kind of cool to have that, but um, we don't have such problem yet. Well, because we have to actually literally write it first. Uh, fail program. All right, so let's actually remove this entire thing because I really want to have like an indication that something went wrong. I really want to have an indication that something went wrong. Uh, so here's the reload shares like this, mm. and I'm gonna just do something like so. Here's that reload shares. Cool. Um, yeah, it could be just a, a red screen, but the red screen is kind of it's kind of boring. But maybe the red screen is exactly what we want. So uh, speaking of red screen, so we already have these shaders as basically red screen. Um, so maybe that's what we're gonna use here then. Mm -hmm. So and we can actually bake the compilation shader into. Um, the compilation uh, fail compilation shader into the program. So I think that's a pretty cool idea. But we need to be able to compile uh, shaders from a source, not from the file. So that means I need to create uh, a different version of this function, uh, compile shader, shader source. All right, so which accepts the source, glchar, like this. Uh, and it's going to be pretty much the same thing, except it doesn't try to slurp the file, right? So I'm pretty sure I can just copy paste this entire thing in here, right? It, it's not going to slurp it. You just already have a source code in here that you can just reuse. Right, here it is. Uh, and the difference between the compile shader file is going to be is that you're just trying to slurp this entire thing. So it's going to be char um, source slurp file uh, slurp file uh, not really panic but file path right and then you essentially call compile um, source compile source shader type uh, and you return the shader from here and so this is gonna be the result and you should not forget to clean the source afterwards and then you're going to return the resource like this. Yeah, there we go. So now we can compile our shaders from file or from the source code. So, and uh, we're going to have predefined source codes for the fail uh, shaders. For the fail shaders. So let me try to compile this entire thing. Hello, Rosor. Welcome to the stream. Mm. Uh, okay, so unknown type boolean. Did you mean bool? Um, that's kind of strange, because I'm pretty sure I actually included this entire stuff. 
Have you tried implementing it with assembly? What exactly? I'm, I'm sorry, I don't quite understand what you mean. Um, what with assembly? Uh, shader result. Oh boy, that will require actually doing some stuff in here. Um, so the compilation has failed. Um, like that and um, all right so and now this entire thing should basically return false and it should basically return true uh, should basically return false and return true uh, all right so will it compile now hopefully Mm hmm, and this is actually kind of annoying. So that means we shouldn't try to do that. Uh, we shouldn't try to do that. Uh, okay, shouldn't try to free the source. Um, unused shader. Okay, so that means if we manage to successfully compile this entire thing, uh, we should assign the result to it. But I'm not quite sure. Yeah, maybe it's a it's a waste of time. Let's just uh, assign it always. Mm -hmm. uh, shader, shader, mm, shader, shader. Uh, So now, speaking of program, uh, it's going to be just program, just program, program. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, excuse me. So that was weird, but okay. Uh, one, more one more time. You're going to program, compile now. Uh, okay, so. So couldn't read file because it's trying to slurp yeah 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 so we shouldn't try to slurp this entire thing wait compile share source now we're talking holy shit uh, main multiplier defined uh, vertex well yeah I mean, because there are different kinds of shaders. Uh, yes, I know why. I know why. I know why. Reload shaders. Reload shaders. Because this one has to be fragment. This one has to be fragment. Yeah, finally. Finally, for Cool, cool, cool. Uh, so, did it say anything? Okay, perfect. Uh, now, I need to not only reload shaders, right, when we are reloading the shaders, right, uh, reload shaders, glu int failed program, we want to have something like this, uh, so com uh, init failed program, failed program, so essentially what it will do, um, we're gonna have something like const char failed uh, frag source uh, actually failed the vert source and I'm gonna literally take the vertex uh, like this right and turn it into the into the string literal right so this is what we're gonna do here so we're turning the string literal uh, query replace and is gonna be replaced with slash and in here and it didn't work because I used incorrect thingy in here so now probably it will it will work it didn't fucking work why don't you work okay so probably have to put extra slash in here finally all right so now we're talking and i can go here and i'm gonna just put it here uh does it work it kind of worked but not really 
There we go. So here is the uh, source uh, of a uh, failed vert source, and I want to have a failed frag source. Uh, failed frag source. And where is my fragment? Fragment shader. Cool. So uh, I'm gonna replace this thing like that, then I want to select everything and do the similar query replacing. Now we have a string literal that I can put in here, uh, like this, uh, like this, there we go, that's pretty cool. Now um, I don't need to reload this kind of stuff, so what I can do here is do uh, gint vert uh, zero, compile shader source this time right and the source is going to be failed vert source for the vertex shader and then i'm going to extract the vertex shader and if something like that uh, happens i can safely say that we need to crash because this sort uh, source has to 100 percent compile otherwise we have to crash all right uh similarly we need to do the thing with the fragment so this is going to be frag, but we should not forget to do a frag shader. So after that, we should link the program. We should link the program, right? But the program that we're linking here is going to be failed program, right? Failed. So we might as well, uh, it will be kind of cool to call this variable failed vert, but it's just wasting too much time, right? I don't have much time to do that. Maybe I do. And then uh, we're actually not gonna use this program. The point is not to use this program actually. Uh, successfully, ah, I'm not gonna say anything. All right, uh, init failed program. Uh, init failed program. So after we initialized the entire thing, after we initialized the entire thing, uh, right. So now, this is the whole point. Now, this is the whole point. We're reloading the shaders, and if reloading our main shaders has failed, we use failed program. You see what I do here? You see what I do? So essentially, uh, like you have a shader that's doing things and whatnot, and uh, if compilation during reload has failed, you switch to the failed program shader, which just draws the uh, red screen. And that's a very good cue. That's a very good indication that I need to switch to my log. Uh, so that I need to switch to my log and check the compilation errors. This is actually a pretty cool idea. I really like this idea. Right, you just switch to that thing. Uh, all right, so now, uh, gel fragment share. Right. Uh, okay, it didn't compile apparently, <laughs> but it also didn't tell me why it didn't compile. Oh, because I forgot to put not in here. So yeah, cool. Uh, so essentially, the idea here is what uh, uh, the original shader. Uh, so the shader could be like something like this in here, right? So it's green, and then I accidentally make a syntax error, right? I reload it, and I get a red screen, and then I look at the lock in here. Oh shit! I made a made a mistake. I fixed the mistake. It fixes, and also in the log I should see. Uh, successful reloading, but successful reloading I did... Oh yeah, because I forgot the new line, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it was not actually flashing. Uh, successful, and there you go. And, uh, yeah, it... Oh, it actually reloaded twice. How can I not reload it twice? It's uh, because it reloads once on uh, key press and key and press, right? Uh, on key press and key and press. So it's probably something like action, but um, since it doesn't have an enumeration here, I cannot even look up what are possible values of this thing. Why all of the library developers make the same mistake over the fucking and over again? Like, why don't you introduce enumerations so I can look up what the fuck are the possible values? Like, oh my god! C programming language exists since 1970 and C developers haven't learned how to fucking use fucking enumerations. <sighs> Holy shit, like why? Why do people still do that? 
This industry is fucking doomed, I'm telling you. Holy shit. Oh my god. Um, people just making the same mistake over and over again. Um, and especially, I like this shit especially, it's so fucking great. Okay, so it's an action and action press. Cool, thank you very much. Um, cool. So, end action equal GLW press. Okay. Uh, okay, so now it actually does that once. Cool. <sighs> it's like, it's almost the creators of C like implemented all of these speeches specifically so you can document your code better with the code itself. Mm -hmm. <sighs> oh shit. Mm. Um okay cool. So yeah, now uh, I can reload this entire shit, and if it fails, I can just say that, yeah. Cool. Uh, let's do committee committee. Let's do committee committee. Uh, so... What did I do here? Um, I think... Um, implement visual... Uh, queue for uh, failed shader reloading. Right, for failed shader reloading. And I want to make a cup of tea. I want to make a cup of tea. Does anyone have any questions while making a cup of tea? What about C++ developers? What about them? Okay. You don't understand. Don't understand what? C doesn't have documentation, though it's C. It does have documentation. Uh, there's a C programming language book. Uh, does it compile com macOS? I don't understand what you mean. Com? What? What com? Uh, on macOS? I have no idea. I have. I don't have a macOS to test that out. Sorry. Uh, and I haven't finished it yet. So, like, I mean, uh, I don't know. I don't really care on what operating systems it doesn't compile at this particular point since I haven't finished anything yet. So like, why would I think about it right now? Like, I don't even have anything working. Um, um, does anyone have any other questions? You want to use OpenShell to display the automation or also to compute the next line? I want to on only use it to display. Have you considered trying mobile development? I have considered trying mobile development and I worked as a mobile developer uh, in a big Russian company. And not just mobile developer, but uh, rather C++ mobile developer. I developed for Android in C++. Uh, tea flavor, uh, it's just a black tea, just a regular black tea that, that is not flavored with anything additional to that. Mac deprecating OpenGL, well, good for them. Yorkshire, we don't have that in Russian, sorry. Yandex, not not Yandex. Alright, so I'm gonna go to the kitchen and turn on the kettle and yeah.
right. I need to now create some sort of a texture. Surprisingly enough, uh, in terms of a texture, right, so usually when I'm using like a sampler to interpolate the texture, it doesn't really give me specific colors and whatnot. So I'm not even sure if it's generally a good idea to do it like that. Okay, let's let's explore. Let's let's explore how we can even do all of that. I feel like I'm wasting time, to be fair. It would be way easier to do that with SDL and whatnot. Uh, but with OpenGL, I just feel like it would be like a good, interesting idea. Yeah, even if I make the texture idea work, even if I make the texture idea work, it's it's kind of difficult to move from that. It just feels a lot of like a lot of effort. It would be easier for me to just slap a rectangle on the screen and just that's it. So I think I'm gonna scrap this entire idea and re-implement the visualization in SDL without using OpenGL because it's gonna be a really waste of time. Um, yeah. Even if I make the idea of texture work, it's just like, I don't know how to move uh, from there further and how to add anything interesting on top of that. It's just, uh, I'm, I'm gonna be wasting time. So, but I'm not gonna be removing this entire code. I'm gonna be extracting it to a separate repo because like I re-implement this code every time I need uh, OpenGL. So I might as well actually put it somewhere and just grab it every time I need uh, something like OpenGL template. Yeah. Also, I just realized, I just realized that I want to pee, so we'll have to make a small break. time do I have? Maybe it's gonna be two minutes. Yeah, let's put two minutes in here. Uh, okay, let's make a small break, you guys have fun. Yo, what's up? Uh, welcome back. All right, let's extract all of that to a separate repo. So uh, I'm going to create something like OpenGL template, right? And I'm going to move everything there. Uh, so a tomato. So I'm going to grab this entire thing and just put it here. Uh, so I'm going to main uh, scene. 
uh, automator. So I'm gonna also copy paste this thing, thing here. Uh, so we have glue and essentially we're gonna replace with with just main and that should just work. Oh, another interesting thing that I forgot is to uh, move these things there as well. Might as well actually remove this entire stuff. Uh huh. And then just be doing that. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh, viz. Okay, this is going to be main. Viz main. Do we have anything else? Okay, that looks cool. If I try to compile this entire thing, it should be working. Cool. So git ignore uh, main. Oh my god, come on, we can do that. License, MIT, readme, uh, open gl template. Uh, just a simple open gl template that I use on my strings. All right, so uh, let's do git init. In it and let's commit everything here. Uh -huh. Ready, set, go. And uh, let's put that in a separate repo. So, yeah. So, next time I will need like this kind of OpenGL uh, template where I need to like sh uh, share a setup and after auto reloading setup. I'm not going to be implementing it from scratch because I'm kind of sick of it. Uh, I'm going to just grab it from, from, this, uh, from this repo. And of course, all of that is open source. So, OpenGL uh, template. Right. And it automatically uh, implements reloading and whatnot, you know, the usual stuff that you expect from such a template. Uh, okay, just a simple. Right, there we go. Uh, so, yes. Let me try to do add origin uh, like this. And let's push that right into the repo. Uh -huh. Cool. So if anyone needs that, you can find it here. So OpenGL template. But I'm going to remove the OpenGL from the original automaton um, uh, repo and visualization is going to be done in SDL instead. Uh, right. So we're going to have SDL2. Uh, we're going to have SDL2 and let's do this C but in SDL. Mm -hmm. And we'll see how it goes. Turn zero. Uh, let me try to build this entire thing. And it worked. Uh, it seems to be. Okay, cool. Uh, cool, cool, cool. Nothing new. All right. Mm. Is it is it still in the video? Um. As you just want to visualize it, wouldn't be easier to use P5C. No, you do not take into account the time to learn uh, the library. Um, Check 
pointer, yeah. So pointer like this. The same shit goes here. Same shit goes here. Hello, Strack. Welcome to the stream. How are you? Okay. Uh, cool. Create window. Um, I'm gonna go to user include SDL. Actually, I need SDL too. I think it's somewhere in a window, but I'm not sure. Is it video? It could be video. Actually, create window. Uh, come on. Uh huh. Okay, so it's gonna be this. Mm -hmm. So it's gonna be const, and then uh, I could put SCP in here. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna put it like that. Might as well put it like that as well. Not particularly convenient way of doing that. Uh, yeah, this is a little bit there. A tomato. Uh huh. It's gonna put it like that. So this one is gonna be zero zero, uh, like this. This one is gonna be uh, screen width, screen width, screen height. So what's going to be the flags? Uh, flags is resizable, so we're going to keep it resizable, sure. Hello, L. Ragnaroxel. I hope I pronounced your nickname correctly. I have no idea how to pronounce it, but welcome. We're really glad to see you anyway. Um, yes, yes, yes. Define this thing. Mm -hmm. All right. So here's that. Uh, a render. I think it's create renderer. Uh -huh. Create renderer. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Const renderer. So provide the window. Minus, and it also has to be a render flex initialization. Yeah, so it's going to be accelerated. I guess that's the whole thing. Uh -huh. Keep it like that. Cool. So we have a renderer and everything. So next one, quit. Um, let's go, let's go, uh, do it like false. Uh, not quit. Uh, SDL event event while not SDL poll events. Uh, I think it's just poll event, and then we can switch upon the event type. And the event type is SDL uh, quit. What essentially we're doing, right? We're doing uh, quit true. Cool. Uh, so after that, uh, we have to use SDL um, render draw color, if I remember correctly. I don't remember uh, particularly. Uh, render draw color. Yeah, 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 here we go. So render draw color. So and this entire thing of course can fail. Alright, so I'm gonna do SCC. Uh, I'm gonna provide the renderer, but now I also need to do hex color unpack and I'm gonna use what color of the background? Uh, let me think. Let me think. Uh, I think I'm gonna use the uh, background color. Right, background background color. So that's what I'm gonna use here. So after that, I need to do uh, render clear. Yeah, I need to do this thing. Uh huh. So this one is going to be SCC. Uh, yep. I'm going to put the renderer. Uh, and then I need to do a present. Pres 
present render present cool so this thing that never fails this thing never fails okay so that's essentially what it is uh, now we need to define define this tank so boolean we need to input boolean Okay, uh, a non boolean, yeah, yeah, so it has to be std boolean. Mm, so now we need to unpack this entire stuff. So it's going to be define uh, color, and let me try to do that. So, how are we going to unpack all of this? So, the red is going to be, yeah, so if you take a look at the background color, background color, which is going to be something like this. F F A A B B C C. Uh, so this is the uh, this is the red. That means I need to take the color, shift it to the right for three bytes. Right, it has to be for three bytes. For three bytes, and then take this entire thing. Take this entire thing and. Uh, mask it like that and that gives me uh, the value for this entire stuff so uh, one two three four so for the green one it's gonna be two bytes for the blue one is one byte and for the alpha it's gonna be zero bytes in here and we don't need a, a comma in here uh, so that looks okay and maybe we don't even need uh, this kind of thing here as well right so we're gonna recompile this one more time and there we go it completely well I mean it's not completely incorrectly it's actually pretty accurate yeah that's a pretty cool color I really like this pink color yeah it's a pretty nice pink color okay so it seems to be working so we managed to do that with SDL so also SDL has a logical size SDL logical size I want to set it up real quick render set logical size uh, to the two, so and it's going to be equal to the size of the screen that we set up, right? Screen width, height. So we're gonna wrap it in a CC, and there we go. So now, yeah, there we go. So if we're gonna have like this grid and whatnot, right? If we're gonna have this grid, um, if we're gonna have this grid. We need to know like width and height of the grid. If you know what I mean. Or maybe we we should just try to port our rule one one zero to visualization. Yeah, sounds like a good idea, actually. Let's let's just try to do that. I really like this idea. So essentially, uh, we're gonna like you press uh, space, and it will just it will just do that several times. Um, all right, let's port uh, let's port rule one one zero to to this uh, to this visualizer. So to port a rule 110, right, we need to have uh, how many uh, rows we want to have. And the amount of rows essentially is going to be the amount of iterations, right? So the amount of rows is the amount of iterations. So let's say that we're going to have like 10 iterations. So the amount of columns is the uh, basically size of the row, right? Rows is amount of iterations and columns is basically the size of the row. Uh, right, and uh, we also probably want to introduce uh, a structure yet again, which is the role. Uh, you know what? I can probably copy paste majority of the code from the rule 110, and I think it will work just fine. It's just the yeah, so essentially, here it is. So, role size is essentially columns, and iterations is rows how many rows you have then we have the type of the cell we have a type of the cell uh, then we have a cell image right we have a cell image but we don't need a cell image here right 
So maybe a cell, we're gonna have cell, cell color, right? We're gonna have cell color and cell color is gonna be just like different for, for different of those things. So what's gonna be the, cell, um, the color of the zero? I think it's gonna be literally just zero. So it's just gonna be nothing. Uh, and for the one, it's gonna be just red. But uh, it's gonna also have alpha. Um, hello, Mana Soyme. Welcome to the stream. Uh, all right, so we're also gonna have a pattern uh, thingy, and then we're also gonna take this entire stuff. Okay, so then we're gonna have a row, and the size of the row is essentially columns, right? And calculating the next row will be the same. Here is the calculating of the next row. We don't need to print a row. But we will need to render the row, and that's going to be a separate thing. Uh, and we also need to be able to have a random row in here. So we also need to be able to have a random row. Mm, so that's pretty cool. Um, um, <clears throat> I want to learn a language which is pleasant to write performant code in and I'm deciding between C++ and Rust, but I don't know which would be better. Learn both? Uh, what stops you from learning both of them? You can just basically learn first C++ and then learn Rust and make an opinion about which one is better for your particular situation. Does it sound cool? You should uh, copyright your pop. No. Why? That's a really strange statement. Um, okay, let me take a look. And we have any other interesting questions, maybe? Uh, so if you want to really go into low-level development, it probably makes sense to learn C then C++ and then Rust. As I already said about Rust, Rust is a pretty cool language, right? But unfortunately, a lot of stuff in Rust doesn't make sense unless you know the whole lore of C++. And all of things in C++ don't really make any sense unless you know the whole lore of C. So essentially, uh, C++ was created to solve problems of C but during solving those problems, they introduced their own problems and they were trying to keep solving them and keep solving them and introducing more problems and Rust is trying to solve problems in both C++ and C and to understand why it, it has all of these features and all of these terminologies, you need to understand what kind of problems people were trying to solve and what kind of problems they were introducing along the way. Uh, otherwise, all of this stuff doesn't really make much sense, unless you're willing to memorize just all of that stuff, but uh, maybe. What do you call the function arguments with square brackets? You... function arguments... indices? I guess, I guess you call them indices. Uh, why do you usually C, use C instead of C++? So, I don't know. I uh, just feel like it. I remember when I started learning to program, I literally learned the basics of like nine languages, eventually settled down. Cool. Um, all right. <clears throat> so, now I want to be able... Um, so, we know how to have rows and stuff like that. Where is the screen, by the way? Uh, screen width, here it is. Here's the screen width. Uh, let's put it here. So, and based on all of that, we can define now. Uh, define um, cell width. Right, cell width is essentially taking screen width. Sc taking screen width. Um, actually converting all of that to flow, that's quite important, and dividing all of that by amount of columns, which is also should be converted to flow. So this gives us a, a cell width, and we want to have a cell height, uh, right, and cell height is going to be just rows. Mm. That's an array index, not a function argument. Uh, what is a function? 
Right, what is a function? So, basically from a mathematical point of view, a function is a mapping from one set to another set. So, you can think of an array as a function that maps set of indices to a set of values. You can think about it this way. Why not? And as a matter of fact, when you do such, a, such technique as memoization, you essentially you can one of the things you can do, right? If your argument maps to an index, right, you can just use arrays instead of functions. Right. So yeah. And by the way, in Ada, uh, syntactically, syntactically, there is no difference between uh, calling a function or accessing an element of an array by an index. So in Ada, in a programming language called Ada, this could be either calling a function or uh, taking an element from an array called f by an index i. And I'm pretty sure precisely because of that. Because array, from the mathematical point of view, is a function that just maps an index to its value. So, semantically, there's not that much difference, if you think about it, right? So, just saying. <sighs> but that's not a pure function. Uh, how does it contradict to anything what I said? I probably, I don't know. But that makes less readability. Uh, readability is a subjective category. All right, so we have width and height. Mm. All right. Oh, you mean it's not a pure function? So you have a concern that uh, basically you may expect that a particular uh, thing will not have a side effect and then it just have a side effect. Well, that could be a problem, but uh, it's not that big of a problem. In programming, in my opinion, there are bigger problems than just an unexpected side effect in, because of switching from function to an array. So you usually have way bigger problems than this. Um, okay, so what do we got? Uh, we have cell width and cell height, and uh, now I want to be able to draw uh, like a render a row, right? Render row. Uh, it should accept the renderer, uh, and it will accept a row, right? It will accept a row, and it would be also kind of cool if we it, if it accepted where exactly it needs to render it. So maybe it's gonna accept like a y axis, uh, like sort of a y axis, and this is where we're gonna start rendering all that. Alrighty. So let's try to render a row. So we're gonna start with zero, and then it's gonna be calls. Uh, and so maybe we should yeah we need to prepare the rectangle so it's gonna be SDL rect it's gonna be SDL rect speaking of C documentation what do you use for C docs doxygen and sphinx what do you mean what do I use for C docs for reading C docs or for writing C docs uh, I usually use neither. If I need to document something, I just write it in markdown file. Uh, or, I don't know. Um, it's kind of a... It's a very assumptuous question. Like, you're, you're making too many assumptions about what I do. For generating docs. Uh, nothing. I guess. So, when I usually don't don't really need that for example in sdl you have documentations in the source code right and i don't like you see in sdl you just have these comments and i'm pretty sure they're using some sort of automatic tool to generate docs from that but i don't use it i just open the source code and i just read it directly so my my answer is i don't use anything i just open the source code where the documentation is written and i just read the source code does it make sense because it's, it's going to be the same thing, right? And if I need to find something within those docs, I can just do grep, uh, grep rn, like renderer, right? And it will search the entire source code and I can quickly jump to the places 
uh, where I'm interested about some particular thing. You see what I mean? So, yeah. Does that make sense? I'm not really sure what you mean, but... Um, it's just easier, it's just simple, it's just the text files, right? Navigating through text files is easier than, you know, these web pages. Web pages are really, really like, slow, slow sometimes. Where can I learn more complex C++? Uh, on the internet, I suppose? And how do you define a complex C++? Com more complex than what? It's a really strange question. I meant like a web documentation for your own code, but I already answered it. You didn't I? I just 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 write it in a text file and I just read it from a text file. You you guys are overcomplicating it. You guys are overcomplicating it. It's just text files all over, like all over the place. I mean, just open a text file, write a text file, and read the text file. You don't need a web browser to write to a text file and to read from a text file. So an ability to read and write text file existed for decades already in our industry. You don't need anything special to do that. Uh, where did you learn that? What did I learn? What? What is the complex C++? I don't understand your question. What? <laughs> what are you asking? What do you want from me? Okay. Uh, all right, so what we're gonna have here. So here's the X and uh, X is gonna be something like this um, I'm gonna multiply it by that and it's gonna be cell width Y is gonna be the same Y and width and height is gonna be Screen width. All right, so here's the rectangle that I need to uh, render, essentially. Uh, here's the rectangle that I need to render, and I also need to uh, render, render color. I can never remember this function, set render draw color. Why is it called like that? Uh, I didn't understand, but okay. So cell I, oh yeah, yeah, so I can just use something like cell color. Right, cell color and it's gonna be uh, a row cells I and that gives us the color that we can then effectively unpack and then we can try to fill the rectangle SDL fill rect SDL fill rect chat tell me do you feel rect uh, I think it's called something SDL uh, SDL render fill rect, something like this. SDL render fill rect. Uh, okay. Uh, I'm gonna provide the rectangle, and so here is the rectangle itself, and I'm gonna use uh, SCC. Cool. So, yeah, so this is how we're gonna render a, a row essentially mm -hmm. oh, this is not what I wanted uh, let me try to make minus B now and a row size this is not a, uh, a row size so where is SCC is it defined somewhere there okay so we need to bring it up like right here okay row size it's actually calls and this is also calls. Cool. Uh, now, I need to define uh, a board, right? Some sort of a board. Uh, so it's going to be a bunch of rows, uh, rows, rows. And the first one should be initialized somehow. So we're going to say that rows zero, random row is going to be like that. And it's quite important to actually make an assertion that rows should be greater than zero otherwise uh, this thing is incorrect implicit declaration of static assert where can we have a static assert maybe i have to actually uh, build all of that with std c11 and also pedantic pedantic uh -huh. 
implicit static assert. Okay, C static assert. Where, where can I get static assert, please? Static assertion, static assertion. What do I need to imp uh, include for static assertion in C? Do I have to provide implicit declaration static assert? Uh, does it have to have a message? I do remember that it had... Do I have to do it like that? All right, so apparently I have to do it like that. Okay, so and for example, if rows is going to become zero, it will fail. A static assertion failed. Okay, uh, you uh, we need to have at least one row. So that's quite important. That is quite important. Okay, so now where is the rows? It's going to be one hundred rows, and we're good to go. Uh, now, 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 now. Uh, what I need to do, I need to iterate starting from one up until all the rows, right? And what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna take the current rows and calculate the next row uh, based on the previous one. So that's basically what we do in rule 101, if you know what I mean. That's what we essentially do in rule 101. Uh, and uh, what I need to do here, I need to render all of them. To render all of them, I need to iterate through the columns, right? Uh, int i zero rows. And in here, uh, I'm gonna be rendering a row. Uh, and which row am I rendering? So it's gonna be rows i. And this one is going to be i multiplied by cell height. That's what we do here. Multiply by cell height. And I guess that's it. So we are ported. Uh, we ported this entire thing to, to visualization. And it didn't do anything. Oh shit! Fuck! What the fuck it's doing? Ah, it's Viz. Okay, so what was actually the problem here? I don't understand. What was the problem? Uh, don't quite know. And I didn't see any problems. To be fair. Um, Okay, is it because of the... Uh, okay, it was because of the uh, trying to render the rows, but I don't understand why the fuck it was so slow. Why the fuck was it so slow? Okay, so if I try to render only a single row, not all of them simultaneously, will it work though? Will it work? So that's a good question. Maybe because it was copying too much? Okay, so that's really strange. So it shouldn't be red all over the place. Background color. Uh, so 80, 80, 80, FF. So let's put it this way. Okay, so the rendering of the row, render row, is completely incorrect. I can see that. I can clearly see that. So X is I width. Oh, it's not a screen. Okay, I see. So it's cell width. I can at least already see that. And it didn't work. Uh, oh yeah, cell width has to be floor... F um, so why it didn't work? I'm so confused. Uh, why does it fill everything with red? 
why does it fill everything with red? Like, I'm not asking for that, but it's filling everything with red, and I don't understand. Like, what the hell? Um, so let me try to print uh, this entire... Might as well, actually. Uh, uh, it's one of these things when I... I made something stupid. I made something stupid. Yes, I did in fact make something stupid. Okay, so that's actually explained it. All right, so uh, okay, that that's that's cool. So the question is, why was it slow though? Why was it slow? So um, let's actually make it slightly different. So what if there's gonna be something like two of them? All right. Uh, all right. So that explains it. But why? Why was it so slow when I tried to do something like rows? Okay, it was not slow. Like, what the hell was going on then? Huh. Alright, but now we have this thing, which is, which is pretty cool. Uh, yes. So, here is a cellular automaton. Um, and we can probably change the color of this entire thing. Change the color of this entire thing. Um, where is the color? Here it is. A, A B, B. Uh, Okay, so that's a little bit more pleasant. So here's the rule 110. Um, so we can probably make less. Uh, less cells, uh, maybe even less iteration, maybe maybe thousand iterations. And uh, if we're gonna have rows, how many of them do we want to have? Let's actually have 100 of them. Is it gonna be too slow? Uh, oh, it's complaining that it doesn't have flow. Oh, that's very interesting. So that means it managed to somehow optimize away. Optimize away. Um, this entire thing. Uh, it's, it's actually really cool. Look at that. So it says that it cannot find floor, but if, an, if, an, if I have this kind of thing, it perfectly compiles. You see, but if you increase the size of this thing, it does not compile. And you know why? I have a feeling that it probably optimized away the call to the floor, uh, and that's why it never needed it at runtime. This is actually so cool. Uh, it managed to optimize away this floor. So this is, this is very cool. I think. Uh, to, to, to. Uh, but yeah, so this is basically the cellular automaton that we implemented at the beginning of the stream. Um, and yeah, of course, if we want to build properly, um, we probably want to put LM in here. So yeah, we can add more uh, more things in there. So let's say we're gonna have thousands of these things, and this is gonna be that. Uh, and that is very slow. Nice. Why is it so slow? I have no idea. Uh, but it is very, very slow if I try to. Yeah. Huh. And it doesn't really render them. It cannot. It, it cannot even render them. Uh, so the, what's it's gonna be like? Hundred by hundred. Hundred by hundred. Okay. So that makes sense. Mm. Alright, so I kind of want to extract some of this stuff. Zero delay, let's put a little bit of a mill milliseconds here, so maybe it's going to be a little bit better. Okay. Um, so I want to have a, like a boilerplate for for this code and be able to reuse this code um, but I'm not sure how to better deal with that uh, maybe I can easily extract a lot of common code um, a lot of common code to like a separate screen or whatnot uh, just a second Mm-hmm. 
Okay, because I want to remove the original rule 110 uh, because it's not that interesting because it does this thing on a console and eh, whatever. Uh, so I'm thinking that I'm going to extract a lot of SDL related stuff, it's not, it's not that, to separate like header, separate thingy uh, that I'm going to include in each individual, in each individual uh, program there. So, and we're going to move from there. Uh, but we'll have to initialize everything ourselves all the time. Mm, we might as well extract like creating the renderer and initializing everything. Uh, but yeah. Mm. Mm, so some of this, these things could be extracted as well. Uh, like and reused across several things all right so you know what i want to do i want to make a small break i want to make a small break like three minutes and uh, uh we're gonna continue later all right let's make a small break it's my break you guys have fun Yo, Epic Hackers, what's up? Welcome back to back. Sorry. Uh, so, sh how should we call the thing that we share between the between the server automatas? Uh, so maybe something like common. Um, let's call it a tomato. Dot h, right? So it's gonna be a tomato. Dot h. Dev a tomato. Uh, define, it's actually define, and if, and I'm gonna put everything like there. Nuffly, hello, welcome to the stream. How are you doing, buddy? How are you doing? Pretty glad to see. You. So we're gonna put all of this check uh, in here. Uh, screen width and screen height are definitely going there. Uh, right, so it's gonna be something like this. Mm. So we're definitely going to have a background and uh, rows and columns, which is going to be reused a lot. Uh, we don't need a cell thingy here because it's going to be defined for uh, for different automatons differently. The next row, uh, main. So, and this is some of the things that we'll have to probably... Uh, create differently um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah I suppose I guess that's how we're gonna do all of that uh, and then we're gonna, we're gonna just include uh, the atomator.h and uh, this entire thing uh, yeah I need to remove this stuff this stuff yes 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 please remove it and i'm gonna rename it to rule 110 it's gonna be that um in the make i'm gonna remove that then i'm gonna remove that and this is gonna be just a, a rule 110 there you go so this is a rule 110 
Um, <clears throat> so there we go. Uh, rule one one zero. Okay, so here's the rule one one zero, and it seems to be working. Um, okay. Matthew F seven seven seven. Oh my God! Thank you so much. Uh, thank, you. thank you so much. Yeah, 26 months and welcome to our Epic Cell Automata Club. Yeah, thank you so much for subscribing. Thank you everyone for subscribing. Recently people started to subscribe less. I don't know why. Maybe because I'm not a god coder anymore. So I really appreciate everyone who's still subscribing. Cheers. Uh, anyways, let's continue. Uh, two, 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 two. Um, implement SDL visual visualization for rule 110. So this is what we're going to have here. And there we go. Uh, in readme, do we have anything special in readme? Uh, I don't think so. So everything is pretty pretty straightforward uh okay so once since we have the like reusable code maybe we can try to implement something like game of life even though i didn't want to do game of life um i think it would make sense to implement it just to test things around mm. Mm. <clears throat> I feel like you get more and more concurrent viewers. Yeah, that is true. But what's the point if you have nothing to eat this month? I do have something to eat this month. Don't worry about it. Just saying. Um, all right. So, <clears throat> uh, game of life. C. So let's try to implement game of life. Uh, so we're gonna include uh, a tomato. H. And we'll have to copy paste some of this code. Uh, yeah, so maybe the pandemic actually explains it. Yeah, maybe. Uh, rule 110. Though, in any case, you, you don't have to subscribe, right? So it's just. Uh, the edutainment is free and always gonna be free. Of course. Because I'm such a generous person, that's why. Uh, all right, not because the market is oversaturated and it's literally impossible to compete in it. No, 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 not because of that, but because I'm a generous person and I believe in the, you know, openness of information from education. See? <laughs> ah! Cheers, by the way. So what I'm thinking. Um, <clears throat> you will uh, charge for the amount of code you write on streams. Uh, I cannot charge that. Um, so I think I want to actually extract some of this stuff. Um, we can maybe we can introduce a function called uh, a tomato uh, create window, right? Create window, and it will uh, automatically create window with the required parameters, and then we can do something like. Uh, a tomato uh, create renderer uh, renderer with the window and it's also going to create that for you so basically you can just reuse these parameters and whatnot an anonymous user gifted the tier one sub to comma dot space thank you thank you so much for for gifting the sub an anonymous user and comma dot space welcome to our tomato club uh, so anyways Let's continue. Uh, two, two, two. Oh, oh, that's good. All right, so let's actually create this kind of functions. I'm not sure how useful they're gonna be. Those we will be able to eat now. Yeah, I wouldn't actually mind to eat something right now. It would be kind of cool, I think. Uh, SDL window. A tomato uh, create a window. A tomato create window, uh, and I'm gonna just do it like that. So I'm gonna move this entire thing. Uh, turn. Uh, uh, all right. Cool. And it will be something like this. 
Hmm. And speaking of this thing, huh. SDL renderer automator create renderer. So we'll have to accept the window. Uh, Emacs, 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 Emacs. Why are you doing that to me? Uh, so let me move this entire stuff in here. So we're gonna have the logical size and then we're gonna return the renderer. There we go. Cool. Uh, so and the reason why we're introducing all that is so I can get rid of this entire stuff. It will make to uh, create renderer from the window, then you can create the window, automator, create window, there we go, and you can organize everything else. So basically we want to keep as much uh, generalized as possible. Mm. All right, is it working? I think it is working. So, um, okay. Reuse, reuse, creation of window and renderer. Uh, creation of window and renderer. Okay, so let's go to the goal example now. And essentially, what we do here, we create a window, right? A window, a tomato, uh, create a window, right? And then, uh, do we have to do? I forgot. Yeah, you have to initialize the, uh, like everything. It would be kind of cool to initialize. Uh, SDL init. SDL init. So we're going to put it here. So then we need to create SDL renderer. Renderer. Oh shit, what the fuck is this shit? <laughs> need to create a renderer in the window. And there we go. So, and then we will also want to SDL quit this entire shit. And uh, so we can have boolean uh, quit false while not quit. I'm gonna do this following thing. Um, yeah, we're gonna do that. Then we're also gonna clean everything. And then we're gonna do this thing. Uh, let's now do goal and query replace with goal. We're gonna compile. It does not compile because we don't have booleans. We need to include std bool. We're including std bool. And yep, but I didn't plan to run a rule. I plan to run goal. Cool. Nice. So uh, we have a special thing for, for the goal. Uh, now, so since we have rows and columns, uh, let's introduce something like board, right? So we have a structure called board. Uh, here's the board and it's going to have its own cells, right? Cell, cells and uh, the amount of rows is going to be rows and the amount of columns is going to be columns. There we go. But we also need to define the type of the cell. Right? Type def uh, enumeration cell and cell can be either dead, uh, which is zero essentially, or alive, which is going to be one. So we have dead and alive cells. And board is just a board. Uh, now, we'll probably want to introduce uh, like a uh, render board, which accept SDL renderer, uh, renderer, and point it to the board. All right, and we're gonna, we need to implement that. Uh, so, and uh, here is the thing. So we need to introduce the color stuff. Uh, 32, uh, cell color, uh, is going to be two uh, and it's going to be something like dead it's probably going to be just all zeros one one uh one two three four let's go uh life is going to be um, 
Let's actually use the color from the rule 110, right? So I kind of liked that pink color. I kind of like that uh, pink color. And now, all right. Mm -hmm. So what else do we have? So let's start iterating, right? So it's going to be a row. We start from zero, a row less than rows, plus plus row. Then we start iterating columns. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be column, zero, column, less columns. And after that, uh, we are ready to fill the rectangle. So I wish I could have something like a tomato fill rect, right? Where I could just do renderer. Then the position is going to be essentially a row multiplied by cell uh, width, row, actually height. Then column multiplied by cell um, width, and I think it have to be like like this. Uh, all right, like this, and then we can do cell uh, width, and then cell height. Uh, all right, so that fills this entire thing, and also we need to use a specific color. It's going to be cell color. And we just use uh, board cells row column and that's pretty much it we only need to implement this function we only need to implement this function a tomato fill rect um, so let's see if it, is, if it compiles of course it doesn't compile because we don't have that function obviously uh, obviously so this one is going to be very interesting. So this is SDL renderer. So this one is going to be just float X. This one is going to be just float Y. This one is going to be float W, float H. And then we're going to have a caller, uh, which is uint32. It's very straightforward. Um, I can do something like this to make it a little bit prettier, hopefully, uh, but it's all subjective anyway. So SDL rect, uh, let's do SDL rect, it's going to be dot x, and I'll need to floor the x, I need to floor the x and turn it into an integer, uh, then I'll need to do it like that, it's going to be y, right, and then this is going to be w and this is going to be uh, h there we go and then sdl um, probably need to go to rule All right uh, fill yeah this is basically what i need to have here this is basically what i need to have here uh yeah render draw color so i unpack the hex color like this then i use this rectangle and that's pretty much it i think that's that's a pretty good thing Cool. So board, uh, yeah, it's a pointer. Nice. It is working. I'm super happy. It is working. It is to working. So it would be also kind of cool to generate a random board. Uh, so let's quickly do that. Uh, a random board which accept the pointer to the board. And by the way, th that pointer to the board could be constant because we're not modifying it. Uh, all right, so let's do the think yet again, like this, and close all of these things, and then board cells, row, column, rand, one of these two, and that's basically how we generate a random board. All right, let's allocate board on the stack, so here is the board, uh, zero initialized, then I'm going to say a random board and initialize that board for me and then we're going to say render board uh, right i provide the renderer uh, and the pointer to the board and that should work let's find out if it works or not uh, board cells because it's a pointer and uh, boom there we go so here is the random board it's probably um, very very bad because of the encoding and shit but I can try to reduce the amount of rows and columns we can make it 10 by 10 because why not sure I can make it 10 by 10 so everyone is happy so is it is it better is it better should be a little bit better I think so 
so okay now uh, we need to have a function that calculates the next state right we need a function that calculates the next state and uh let me quickly do that um goal c uh goal c mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Random board, uh, next board. So we're gonna have uh, two boards in here. So we have a previous board that is not modifiable, and we're gonna have the next board that is modifiable, right? So that's what we're gonna have here. And I'm gonna again iterating through all of these things in here, uh, right? Like this. I'm gonna iterate through all of them. And I will need to look into the neighbors. So I need to count the neighbors. Uh, and boards. Board uh, neighbors. Right. So we'll have to provide the board itself and row and column for which we need to count neighbors. Right. Um, yeah, let's actually extract this entire function. Something like this. Let's put the return integer. And here is the board. And this one is going to be integer, integer, there we go. Uh, so, cool. And this has to be a function, of course, like this. But I also want to mark it as not implemented. Whew, I'm a little bit tired. Does anyone have any questions, by the way? Does anyone have any questions? Uh... How to send it uh, to this course? What course? I'm not sure. I wish I could contribute more, but I'm way worse at code. Uh, contribute uh, code? I don't know. I, I, I'm just writing some bullshit, and I'm, I don't think I'm that good of, at coding as well. I just write random symbols, and people will think that you're good at coding because they won't understand you anyway. So. Um, you don't really need to be good at coding for people to think that you're good at coding. You just need people to think that you're good at coding. You see what I mean? Um, right. Does anyone have any questions? Uh, your synthesis highlight dim looks very vibrant. Uh, where can I get it? Uh, you can get it uh let me show you mm, nothing's moved yeah so valentin you can get it from here it's you think you're thinking you're joking but it's not a joke it's literally this uh if you want to use the same highlighting as me you can use that mode so i only have highlighting for string literals and preprocessor and the comments right so it's a it's a special mode uh, do you plan to do some APL one of the friends? Maybe at some point. Uh, no syntax. I do have a syntax highlighting. What are you guys talking about? Here's the here's the color. Here's the different color. And also comments have different colors and stuff like that. I don't know what you guys talking about. Uh, so there is a syntax highlighting. Mm. That's good. Um, all right. Um, so we need to count the neighbors. Uh, I really didn't know what I was asking for, but sometimes I ironically think that highlighting distracts me. Uh, okay, you can try that mode if you want to. Do you mess around with 3D sometimes? Sometimes. Uh... <clears throat> Um, I need a mode because I want this thing to wrap around. I want this thing to wrap around. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I'm going to be iterating from minus one uh, until it's equal to one. Mm, I think it's going to be called zero. Zero. Mode. Uh, 
Okay. So this one is going to be column. Like this, like this. Uh, and now I need to compute the actual row here. So it's going to be row zero plus the row. I advise people to not use syntax highlighting until you understand the language. You may end up depending on it if you use it from the beginning. To be fair, depending on the syntax highlighting doesn't sound that huge of a programming problem. <laughs> to be fair, throughout your programming career you're gonna encounter way worse problems, magnitudes way worse problems than being dependent on syntax highlighting. It may be a problem, but it's such a drop in the ocean, seriously. Look, so the problems that we will have to deal with are just fucking enormous compared to just being dependent on syntax highlighting. Um, Um, all right. Okay, so here's the row, and of course, we don't want to do that. <clears throat> if the row equals to zero and, uh, and not equal zero, or the column not equal zero, then we're going to do like that. Okay, that's cool. And now, mm -hmm. so here's the row and column. And the thing is, I want to be able to mod this thing around cell um, around rows, around rows, and I want to mod this entire thing around columns, right, something like this. Um, Yes, once you have that, and we have a result. Uh, and if previous, by the way, since we are computing this entire thing like that, so this could be const, this could be const. Return the results. So now we know how to compute uh, the neighbors, hopefully. Okay, it doesn't really work because we don't have a mode. So, a tomato, so let's implement the mode. Uh, so, it's gonna be something like a b, right? A mode b, then uh, plus b mode b. So it should be, I think that should be alright. Uh, yep. What's up on the both? Welcome back. Uh -huh. Okay. So it complained about something, but not, not that much. Alright. So let's switch upon the previous uh, cells row column. Right. And it's going to be case. Cell um, actually dead. We have a situation when it's dead, and when we have a situation when it's alive, and then we also have a default situation, uh, which should be unreachable. Right? So we might as well actually put an assert. Uh, false. Uh, next board unreachable. Okay, something like that. So and so if you're dead. And uh, next uh, cells row column <sighs> neighbors equal three. You have to become alive, otherwise you're dead. 
so that's it. Uh, next cells uh, row cell neighbors um, two or three alike dead. There we go. So that's how we compute the uh, board. Next board. So this is dead. What's another one? Dead. Uh -huh. Too many mistakes I made. Okay, so I need to include a cert. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Cool. So we should be able to properly compute this entire stuff now. Uh, I'm going to be introducing two boards. Uh, as usual, board two. Uh, also, it's going to be zero initialized. Um, so, and we're going to have a so foreground, which is going to be initial zero. So I'm zero initial. I'm generating a random board for the current foreground, right? So then I render the current foreground board, right? And I need to compute the background one. So background is one minus FG. And next board is essentially board FG, board BG, and FG becomes BG. There we go. So that's how we do all of that. And that lets us switch between different things. So we can also delay like uh, half of a second and that will compute next board every time hopefully there we go so here we have a game of life happening it's pretty pretty i think and something went wrong i don't know what exactly why is it so slow there's something wrong and it doesn't react to to being killed uh so am i handling this shit incorrectly why are you not dying sometimes it's just so confused okay am i doing that incorrectly Am I am I really doing that incorrectly? Like uh, so because I already had this problem and I'm so confused. Um, so something SRC main pull event. Oh shit! I see. I see. I put this not in here, and it should be there. That actually explains a lot of shit that's going on. So um, yeah. Okay, so now it's working it and it's yeah it can it can work now. Uh, so I guess this is a game of life, but to confirm that it's an actual game of life, we probably need to introduce the how is it called? Uh, glider that will confirm that it's a game of life. So let's actually implement a function for the glider. Uh, okay, so... Um, put glider at. So we're gonna accept the board like this and also a uh, row and column. I'm gonna accept row and column. Cool. So board cell so row and column where does it start uh let me see let me see let me see it's gonna be dot uh dot dot, dot. okay so this one is gonna be like this uh, i probably have to save all of that properly yeah let's quickly do that uh glider so glider is gonna be like this it's gonna be three by three right so here's your glider and it's gonna be like that uh, see so dead alive dead uh, eh. okay so this one is gonna be uh, 
life. Dead. Life. So here's the glider. Okay, cool. So what we're doing here? Uh, we're iterating th uh, through these three by three things. Uh, row int. So this should be something like row zero, and this should be zero, I suppose. Yeah, zero. Uh, less than three. Uh, right, less than three, and it's going to be zero. And this one is going to be column. Uh, column, and uh, we're going to put it like that. And now. Uh, const int row is going to be row zero plus d row, but we also have to wrap it around uh, with the amount of rows. Uh, the same shit goes like this: query replace row column, boom. And now we're going to do board uh, cells um, row column glider d row d column. So now we should be able with this function to place a random glider somewhere. Okay, so let me see. Instead of initializing this thing ran... I was implementing all of that in the wrong place! Holy shit! It's a wrong source code. Oh my god. It should be here. Doesn't really matter that much. Uh, now, so here's the random board. I mean, I just placed it in the wrong place. It's, it's not that difficult to move it to, to a different function. It's not that big of a deal. Uh, all right, so this is the board and uh, board FG. And I'm gonna place the glider somewhere here. All right, so it's gonna be placed at zero, zero. So is it gonna work now? There you go, here's your glider and it is moving. It is doing things. It's goddamn amazing. Okay, so maybe I want to make it a little bit faster because I think it's a little bit slower. Um, so that's pretty pogue. Maybe even faster. Uh, maybe like 150. So the cool thing now, I can place these gliders like in different places. Right, so the second one could be like something like 4-4. Four, four. Right, so let's, let's place it at 4-4. Four, four. And now we're going to have two of them. So, okay, that's pretty cool. Uh, let's take a look at the rule uh, rule 110. You know what I want to do with the rule 110? Essentially, I wanted to keep sliding around, right? Basically, uh, at each delay, um, iterate to the next cell and just shift around, if you know what I mean. That would be kind of cool. Um, so, let me see. So, automata fill, automata rule. Okay, so. Uh huh, and I'm gonna git ignore goal. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Add conways game of game of life. Cool. So, uh, in readme, I might as well actually do something like goal. I'm gonna push that into the repo. Uh, so you can find all the source code in here. So you know what I want to do? I already explained what I want to do. Yeah, let's quickly do that. So essentially, right? Here's the row. Uh, here's the bunch of rows for uh, one one zero, oh. and I want to keep track of the current row, like something like current row. Uh, yep, something like current row. And we might as well actually put it somewhere here. Right, so here's that, and current row is gonna be zero. So what essentially we're doing, we take current row, uh, current row, and initializing it with a random. Um, now, when I'm trying to render all of the rows, I, I want to render them starting from the... Yeah, so that should be actually super easy to implement. Uh, uh -huh, so this one has to be zero initialized. Okay, so here is the random row. And now we're going to SDL wait... Uh, what was the, in the goal? 150. I should probably extract it to like 150. 
Anyone know what's rule 110? Uh, so then I actually provide. Do you have Google? Uh... <clears throat> yeah, it's almost like 1D game of life pretty much. Um, so and what I want to do here is essentially I'm going to be rendering it like that, but I'm going to shift, actually shift, uh, current row. You changed? Yes, I did change it. Um, so let's pull it like this. It's going to be row, row. Uh, what I'm thinking. So the role should be usual, but the one should be shifted. Okay, role plus. So this one should be like this, but this one should be plus uh, current role, plus current role, and it should be modded around the roles like this. And I think that's a good solution. I think it's a good solution. So then you do render role. Uh, any particular reason? I explained the reason when I was switching. You probably missed it. Alright, so we're rendering everything here and now I'm doing... Uh, current role, let's actually do something like next row. Uh, next row, current row plus one, mod rows. Alright, so and... Oh, since it's... So rows, uh, next row is, I already have, one. okay. Uh, mm -hmm. Next row, current row, and the current row becomes end row now. Yeah, so we, can, uh, we keep recomputing these things. Uh, keep recomputing these things, and when I compute the next row, well, yeah, that's that should be alright. Okay, let's see what's going to happen. And I need to rebuild everything. Row one one zero. Oh. Uh, current row. Uh, rows. Next row. Is it going to work? Well, it kind of does work, but not really. Um, because... Huh. Ah, that's very interesting. So I have to actually... So I have to start from the zero up until next row. Up until next row, but if it starting wrapping around oh i didn't even know how to properly do that oh, shit. Mm. but it should be okay let me try, try, try to take a look at it well, that, why does it have that thing at the top? I don't quite understand. Why does it have that thing at the top? Because if I have a row, right, if I have a row, current row, uh, so I want it to just drop down and then start scrolling on, on, the, on the then. So that means I have to do it, um, Maybe I never have to do that. Maybe I'm just gonna... Yeah, maybe I just have to do it like that then. Uh, well, it's just we're gonna wrap around itself. Uh, it's probably a reasonable solution, but not, not really. So it would be a little bit more interesting if we had more of these cells, you know what I mean? Uh, so instead of 10 by 10, we could have like 100 by 100. I think that would be a little bit more interesting. Uh, but it would probably kill the encoding. 
Uh, oh yeah, just a second. It probably kill the encoding. So does it kill the encoding? It probably kills the encoding, but it looks kind of cool as it goes down. At least uh, on my side, it looks kind of cool, uh, but then it probably kills everything for you. And uh, then it starts over. Encoding is fine. Oh, oh, probably because it actually incrementally changes everything. It, yeah, it, it incrementally changes everything. So that's probably why encoding is fine. But I want this thing to start scrolling as it hits the bottom, and I'm not sure how to do that. So, yeah. Well, I kind of do know how to do that. Hmm. We can keep track of the beginning and then. So it could be sort of like a circular uh, circular buffer, if you know what I mean. Uh, circular buffer. So that means you have uh, rows begin and then rows size. And it's initially something like this. So we can uh, tr uh, treat it as a circular buffer. Um, so then we set rows begin 0 to a random row and row size to 1. So that gives us that. Um, cool. So and then we are, when we are initializing, when we are drawing something, we're going to do rows begin. Actually from 0 to rows size. And then the actual thing is computed as mod. Um, rows begin plus row around the rows so yeah then we're rendering starting from the beginning and around the rows cool um so next we can do something like a row next next ro ah, next row rows rows begin right, rows begin and in here, we're going to have different situations, right? We're going to have different situations. If a row's size is less, um, is less than the whole capacity, right? What we're essentially doing, we take rows, rows begin plus size, and we modding it, uh, modding it with rows. And we assign next to it like this. And then we just increment the rows side. So I'm, what I'm implementing here, I'm implementing just a, a circular buffer. Right, I'm implementing circular buffer. This is going to be plus one. Uh, but in case of this thing, we just have to increment begin plus one but keep the size the same but in case of this one um, it has to be rows begin plus one and also has to be modded around all of the rows and that will create a circular buffer and that should make everyone happy hopefully uh, next row rows rows begin okay and this is plus one. Oh shit, that fucking sucks. Uh. Okay, so maybe we have to do that slightly in here, I guess. Oh fuck. It sucks so much. My brain stops working. I need to finish that, I need to finish that, but my brain shutting down. Fuck, it's so annoying. Uh, it's so annoying when you just need to finish that and your brain is just, nah, fuck it. Mm. So, um, roll size. Um, so you increment it by one and essentially, maybe you have to, Wait a second. Coder's block? You've no idea what you're talking about. Um, <sighs> All right. 
so what we need to do we need to iterate through the beginning until the size okay so that gives us that rows begin and we're wrapping it around but we're using a zero there uh we had a rate from pilada thank you thank you for the rate welcome welcome everyone uh i'm working on cellular automatas automata i don't know how to pronounce that but uh things like game of life or rule 110 and i'm trying to finish the thing i'm trying to finish this thing but i cannot because my brain doesn't work um yes so now this one has to be rules size plus one i should probably turn it into like a proper proper ring buffer that's what i need to do like a proper ring buffer but i kind of don't want to do that i kind of don't want to do that because it will force me to create some bullshit like well i mean i probably have to do that anyway so let's go ahead and do that uh so rose uh let's call it board so it's gonna be like this and we can move begin and size into into these things right right and that means i'll have to have such things as uh board next board next row <laughs> so fucking sorry anyway um, <laughs> um so essentially maybe i also want to do something like push a row uh where you just provide the row uh this is one thing and we can do something like board next row as well which is computing uh based on the previous one Right, we're just computing based on the previous one. This is another thing. And we also want to introduce something like void board render, where you provide SDL renderer, a renderer. Oh boy, I really don't want to do all of that because it's just too much work, but it will ensure that I don't make a mistake. Uh, so now, essentially, what I can do is just board push row. Uh, board did i okay so that means i have to allocate that thing somewhere i'm gonna go allocate it here and uh so i'm gonna just make a random random row hopefully so here's the random row then uh i'm doing board render renderer uh, board and then I can do something like board next row like that. Uh, I am so goddamn fucking tired. Holy shit! But I need to finish that, otherwise I won't be able to sleep. Right. So uh, now, okay. What do we want? Did you did it work? It, it probably didn't work. Okay. So uh, yeah, all of that shit needs to be gone. Uh -huh. Okay, so this is what we're doing here. Um, so essentially, I'm doing board rows board begin, and I just assign it here. And now we have two situations when board size is less than rows. In that particular case, uh, I have to actually do it like that size size and i need to mod that b with the rows right and then i just increment size plus one cool otherwise i'm i'm gonna be incrementing the begin the begin but i'm gonna do it like that uh, boom Okay, so now we can push. Now board next row is gonna be um, based on the last one, right? So essentially, we need to do it slightly differently. Okay, so it has to be like minus one, and then have to calculate the next row based on that, and then I'm gonna push that into the board. 
push that into the board and this is how we're gonna be doing that is it gonna work i don't know okay so now i need to render this entire ship and the question is how we're gonna render all right so for uh, a row zero less uh, than board uh, size plus plus row and uh, what we're gonna do here is render row so how do you render row so this is what you provide okay so here's the render row and i provide the renderer then i take the board rows and i start from what i start from the begin uh, board begin plus row and i need to model all of that with just rows right and the y is going to be essentially rows multiplied by cell height and that's basically it that should work that should compile and uh once this is working i can die in peace hopefully uh let me see so i rebuild everything and let's see so it's starting doing things uh but we need to in decrease the size of the uh of this board please don't distract me please don't distract me Make my screen. okay yeah finally finally it's working so it starts scrolling around so that's that's exactly what i was trying to do i was trying to implement this uh circular buffer so it can basically scroll like that we can probably make it scroll even faster uh so we can scroll it even make it scroll even faster and it's gonna be look it's gonna look pretty cool uh when you have more of these things uh let me let me see let me see let me see let me see uh where is the yeah let's make it 100 by 100 it's probably gonna kill the encoding it's definitely gonna fucking kill the encoding but uh it should be actually kind of cool so let's wait until it hits the floor and it's gonna start scrolling does it kill the encoding is the encoding even for me this is actually quite fucking shit <laughs> ah. but yeah so yes it kills the encoding like it even for me it looks like shit to be fair <laughs> but yeah so it's, now it's kind of scrolling around um we can probably reduce it to like 20 by 20 so it's not that bad but it's at least you can see how it scrolls around and that's really strange why was it why was it like that ah why does it have this space that's very really strange but anyway um oh by the way one of the things i wanted to do um is to make the calculation of rule 1110 to wrap around horizontally as well to wrap around horizontally as well okay so implement a ring buffer for rule 110 rendering okay so now let me try to modify it so now when it co uh, computes itself it's gonna wrap around as well so how we're we gonna achieve that i'm gonna be iterating starting from zero up until the columns and the way we're gonna do all of that is we're gonna do mod uh columns i and then mod columns and we're gonna actually oh you know what yeah, yeah, yeah. so we're gonna actually use i and that should be all right um Mm -mm -mm. Okay, let me see if it can wrap around now. Well, it should be wrapping around. Uh, but it's kind of difficult to tell if it does. Okay, so what about 20 by 20? Uh... Yeah. Yeah. Mm hmm. So it's, it's doing things, which is cool. All right, let me commit that. And uh, yeah, 
make rule 110 wrap horizontally as well. All right, so I'm going to push that right in the report. You can find all the source code that we used, that we uh, had today here. And so unfortunately, we didn't look into more different interesting um, cellular automata because I spent too much time doing OpenGL. So I think tomorrow we're going to continue doing this thing and um, we're going to implement more of them. So we, so far we only implemented Game of Life and Rule 110, but there's more actually. And there's more uh, automatas that act very interestingly. Uh, 2D1, I'm not sure if I'm going to implement 3D ones, but maybe something on hexadecimal. There are also continuous ones that are not really on a cell, but they are using like float positions in a space and they're really weird. Um, so yeah, I think I'm going to call it a day for today. And we're going to continue doing this thing tomorrow. So we're going to implement more interesting cells, automatas, automata uh, tomorrow. So that's it for today, boys and girls. That's it for today. Thanks everyone who's watching me right now. Really appreciate it. Have a good one. I see you tomorrow. Tomorrow we're gonna continue doing this shit. Uh, check out our schedule. Uh, check out our WhatsApp channel. Um, check out our Discord server for offline discussion with the community. And let's maybe raid somebody. We haven't raided anyone for a while, and we've been raided several times today. So maybe it makes sense to give back. Um, all right. So what do we got? What do we got? Mm. Who should we write today? Uh, Frey is streaming. Is she streaming some sort of development or something else? D&D uh, &D stream. Uh, it's not programming, unfortunately. So let's see who we can raid. Uh, okay, so let's actually raid him, I suppose. Uh, we haven't raided him for a while. Uh, all right. Mm, choo, 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 choo. Mm. Mm. Twitch is so slow that I can even type properly. Thank you. Thank you for watching, everyone. Thank you. Uh, today was a pretty nice stream. I really enjoyed it today. All right. Get ready for the raid, boys and girls. Get ready for the raid. And I see you all uh, tomorrow. Love you. Mm -hmm.